Welcome, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, everyone in the chat, all the legends here. I am your host, Austin Thompson, host of the Melodome, where the best souls roam. It's going to be a great stream. Just making sure everything is five by five over here. It looks like everything's good. All right. <clears throat> People rolling into the chat. It's going to be a good one. Yes. So we got a banger stream today. It's going to be fun. Of course, we got a special guest, my boy, Mike LaBrash from High Vibrations. What's up, brother? What's How's up? it going? How's it going, dude? Glad to be here. Um, yeah, man. Feels so good to be back in the Mellow Dome. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's going to be a good one, man. We had another, we had a good banger the other day. If you guys missed that, it is. We did do it live over on Mike's channel. Um, so you definitely go check that out over at THC Show. Hit that sub. You know, make sure you hit that bell. Got to get over there and do that. Um, if you aren't catching this live, you will also be able to catch it on both of our channels. So make sure you look for that. Yeah, this is going to be a good show, man. Um, we had such a great show the other day that I was like, bro, we got to do another one. We could have kept going for another few hours easily. Am we, I wrong? We, no, man, we, uh, we definitely uh, ping pong off each other. You know, and when our minds get together, even when we're in the back of the show, I think we both of us are constantly saying, geez, I wish we were just already streaming because, yeah, you know, we're always talking about something great and uh, it always seems to roll into something new. So there's, there's, there's an, always a new topic. It's never dull when me and you hang out. I love that. Yep, definitely not, man. Definitely. We're going to be chilling here. It's going to be a high vibration style. I got my handy dandy pen right here. Oh, anyway. um, yeah, the family left the house, so I'm home alone so I can we can just chill yeah, well i'm not home alone i got morpheus morpheus showed up here today to kick it with us in the dome oh gee you know how you it know? goes for all of you don't know morpheus the founders day one well, day the one. co founders <laughs> he don't say much he just be playing lookout a lot of knowledge yeah. he gives spit you know yeah he's definitely. wise old and wise <clears throat> so before we get into all the things we're going to talk about let me do some plugging ways to support the show guys you can go to my website, mellowdome.live. Um, there's a link to the merch store. You can get all kinds of merch. We got hoodies. We got mugs. We got T-shirts. We got stickers. We got magnets. We got bumper stickers. All that cool stuff. Some pretty badass hoodies over there. And some pretty cool, jer uh, not jerseys, but um, T-shirts, different designs. I might get a jersey up on there if they have options. That would be pretty cool. Mellow Dome jersey. But um, yeah, so that's a good way to support the show. Also, down below, we have Cash App, dollar sign Mellow Dome. I got the PayPal. We got Zelle. Also, you can do Super Chat and a YouTube. We got some Rockfin tips. We are live on YouTube and Rockfin, ladies and gentlemen. I forgot to hit the go live on the Twitter, so we are not live on X. But um, yeah, this is going to be a good show, dude. I have a bunch of things lined up for us. This is Everything Flat Earth. Um, got basically just talking about where we live and maybe talk about some of the current things going on in the in the community, some new information that's coming out, some, 
some videos, whatever. Mike, I don't know what you got or what you want to add to it, but I have some thanks for you. And then also, when we're done with all that, then I'm going to open up the phone lines. Let me go ahead and just grab that right now. Okay, and uh, so if you guys do want to, we're going to do, uh, we're going to take calls. We're not going to do an open panel style. I'm going to bring one person on at a time, so we're not talking over each other. <clears throat> and then you guys can come on and ask anything you want. We'll give you guys the floor for a few minutes. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to put that in the live chat. I will pin that up at the top of the chat. And um, if you guys are planning to call in, oop, I don't want to show that one. If you guys are planning to call in, you can go ahead and hang out backstage and watch the rest of the show backstage if you wanted to. Um, but we are not going to be taking calls until the second half of the stream. Did I put it up on screen? Oh, yeah, I did. And then I have to come over here and pin it. Wait, let me do that again. Sorry, brother. You do your thing, man. It's nice not have to click any buttons and get to chill on this side for once. Especially dealing with that new OBS I got, man. It's such a learning curve. Like that show with Dave, we had some technical issues, but what a great show. We've had a bunch of great shows these past couple weeks. So like uh, Austin said, if you haven't seen the show that me and even Austin just did, go check it out. It's got a lot of good comments on it already. Um, it was a great show. Got a lot of good topics. Gravy. Let them know what else you'd be doing, bro. I know you'd be streaming a lot. You need to. Oh, bro. I, yeah. If you, uh, you want to let me hit my plugs real quick. Go ahead. Um, run them through, brother. Run them through. Yeah. You can find me at thcshow.live. And then also every day I stream in the morning after I drop my girls off at the bus stop, I do video game streaming. And then um, I'm also always on my EUC. So if you're into any electric vehicles, like if you like uh, the, the one wheel skateboards or electric bikes, I go to events like that and record. So there's a lot of good uh, content on my youtube channel it's a little disorganized because i do so many things but i'm not um you know on a one one thing it's not just podcasts i do a lot of other stuff so come on over check it out hit that bell and uh let show me some love yeah my boy mike he is not one dimensional man got a life and it's cool dude it's cool where are you streaming those gaming at you didn't mention it's, that it's kick.com forward slash thc show my man jess palmer excellent mod right there um he's always supporting the show he, he's uh throwing the link in the chat right now hell yeah Cool. Awesome support. And I see him. He's always over there in the live chat representing, supporting. That's very awesome. Shout out to all of you guys in the chat. We got Stephanie, Jeff Hunt. Jeff Hunt said it was a legendary podcast. Thank you. Appreciate that. We got Effed Up World, Hippie Shake, much love. Tony Coriolis, Effie Nation, Derek Juan, all Winston, Shifty yes. Eye Shady, Trish Clark, Austin Murphy. What's up, bro? Long time no see. Hope all is well. Um, we got Derek in here. What's up, brother? Hope and all no, sometimes like the names in the chat might change and grow, even you know, obviously. Uh, what a great community. You guys are such um big supporters, and you guys have been showing me a lot of love lately. A lot of memberships have been coming through, a lot of uh store purchases. Shout out to Tony Coriolis, and like I said, all the good moderators that have been linking my channels. Angela just got a shirt, and I've been sending out a lot of stuff. I really appreciate the support. So, yes, shout out to all the chat. Yeah, I hear your show at least once a week because of Jaron. He's always he always uh, plugs it at least once a week. <laughs> uh, shows that I love are uh, obviously uh, Jaronism.com. There you go. And uh, Conspiracy Music Guru, Flat Earth Dave. You know, check those channels out if you haven't already. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, we got Doug here in the house. What's up? Effie Nation. What's up, bro? Bunch of legends. Let's see. Psyop within a Psyop over there on the Rockfin. I see you, brother. I see you. Um, yeah, so we'll be taking calls, guys, uh, and let's just get right into it. Is there anything else we need to throw out there? Um, I don't think so, right? No. Anything on your end you wanted to promote? No, just that last episode. I really had a lot of fun. I'm glad we, me and you are back doing our thing. And chat, you can expect to see a lot more of it, I think, you know, uh, if you, you know, if you agree, Austin, I think we're going to be doing a lot more of this. Yeah, definitely, bro. Definitely. Definitely. It's always a good time, brother. All right, so everything flat earth. I want to get into it. I have a list of things. So we got some flat earth topics. We have some um, silent weapons topics. If we have time, we can get into that. Also, I know you're big on the whole cam trailing thing. Uh, I have a few things I wanted to show you. I'm, I know that'll just get you on a good rant. So it should be a good show today. And then also we will be taking calls on the second half of the stream. It is pinned at the top of the chat. 
um, giving each caller a few minutes to come in and kick it with us, ask some questions or get anything off their chest they wanted to. Mellow vibes are mandatory, that is for sure. But uh, yeah, I want to start off with something that uh, Harmon, shout out to Harmon Walker, our boy Harmon, he sent me some pictures. Um, by the way, Harmon, one of the best supporters of the Mellow Dome, absolutely appreciate him. If it wasn't for him, I would have <coughs> never gotten that amazing footage of the eclipse, and I never would have become addicted to getting shots of the sun and the moon as much as I have been. <laughs> it's like I'm always wanting to go outside and just it's I'm I'm like infatuated with the sky. Man. I want to know. I want to learn. I want to try and figure it and, all. And out, when you, you realize, know? like you're putting your hands on it, I know you're not uh, physically touching the moon, but zooming in that close feels like you're traveling there almost. And that's I think what makes it intriguing to me is you get to experience something that you've maybe been thinking about or looking up at the sky a long time, and just letting other people do all the experiments for you. But when you really get to get your hands on that camera and zoom in and 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 focus because it keeps going out of zoom and you know and get it focused just right and you snap that good picture I, I do the same thing it feels really good yeah remember that one picture you commented on it about it could be uh it could be the burnt the out sun. sun remember the shot of the moon i got where it showed like now mm. it, i'm just telling you what it looks like guys so no one get triggered okay so it looked like mountains and then the shadows were being casted behind it remember that zoomed up picture <sighs> <coughs> you know what I'm talking about? I don't, I can't, not, I don't want not to quite. For it. No, 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 but yeah. But when I get those kind of shots, man, it's like it looks pretty physical to me. And that absolutely looks oh, like a shadow sure. is being casted. I'm, I'm pretty convinced it's not emitting its own light. That, that could be sunlight. I'm reflecting. on the same boat. You know, and you and I have a lot of different aspects about space too, but I think with the moon, we are 100% on the same page. I've also noticed that over the years, our, I, our thoughts on it have changed for sure. What you know a growth what I mean? process to, right. to come into this and go, Oh, I think I have the answers every day. You're not that the, the, the lies haven't changed, but your truth, you know, to what might, it might be has keeps growing come and, to a better well, understanding. We sure. learn new, new words, new terms, you know, yeah. How things work. Great. I mean, exactly. understanding this world is what's my awakening is all about and just becoming more connected with it. Is the stream pausing for only Doug? I don't know. It looks like it's five by five for me. Um, but yeah, so shout out to Harmon Walker for uh, gifting the camera and just being a great supporter for the show. But he sent me some pictures and he asked me, he gave me like little quiz with some pictures of the horizon. And I want to ask you. Let's knock so it I'm out. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to do what Harmon did to me and we're going to see it, how, how well you got it. Okay, Let's because... And then, you know, this is alluding to our ideas on the on the horizon, right? Because most of our lives, we were looking at it like <laughs> it's a physical edge of a curving ball. You know what I mean? Like it's the land curving away from us. So I'm going to pull this up. And, you know, and it's funny you say that. Go ahead. Let me just add in on that. Yeah. Because I think about that a lot is what did I used to think before I became a, you know, level waterer? Um <laughs> Is is that I didn't look at it as that it was a ball. I just looked at it as I couldn't see that far. As that I knew, as a human being, I, I just couldn't see that far, right? I just I didn't ever look at it as a ball, and I never understood the ball. So I I don't know. It's weird. never understood what we were even looking at. We weren't taught things like this, you know. Mm. Oh, this is a trippy one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're looking at the horizon right now. Okay. Now, what do you think you're looking at right here? What do you think is happening? Like, just give me a term, a word. Uh, an optical illusion? I don't know. Or like, like do, you, do you think it's like a refraction? Do you think it's a mirroring? Do you think it's... Mirroring, it looks like. A mirroring effect, right? Sure. Yeah, that's what I that's what I said to Harmon. And Harmon agrees that this is a mirroring effect. So where do you think the horizon is right here? At the top of the screen or at the three quarters of the top of the screen? So I would say it's right here. So right below all this terrain is the actual horizon. But there's there's like an island or something in between. And I think it's just causing the mirroring 
on the water in between the two land masses and you see this reflection out there due to humidity and it's like compressed but i just want this is a warm-up we're gonna get to the actual ones right because personally i don't know where the horizon is right here <laughs> okay and that's what's crazy about this right you know where would you see the physical it seems to me like here? It's, well no none of that i mean you're only seeing what two miles out three miles out four miles out i have no clue it's not even that far because of the mirroring effect. If this is a true mirroring effect and it looks like some haze, I'm not sure that this is a. What if it's waves? Yeah, that's no. a good point. Derek said, I don't know. Let's go to the next one here. We're going to go to the next one. All right. So my question to you, to you here, where do you think the horizon is right here? Where do you think the. The apparent horizon <laughs> is you tell me, do you think it's right here where the boat is? right where the boat is like right past it yeah i mean I no try. where my where my mouse is do you think this is the horizon right right here right, behind past, the boat? right above the blue line like slightly above the blue line i'm not alluding yes. to it i'm just asking you not, yeah I, I would no i feel you but yeah i i th do you think this is the horizon no right here could be it could be this is how this is how the you know it plays tricks on you for me it looks like we're looking yeah could the horizon be right here it looks like it's bending it hmm. it could be the top it could be the top of it all right so i'm going to show you okay let's show the audience it, that, it is the top of it yes and then so i, I see <laughs> yeah so here's the thing dude the boat is sitting there but you can see the horizon beyond it and due to atmospheric conditions, temperature, humidity, all that, we're seeing the reflection of this boat. Most certainly on the other side. On the other side of the of water. Of the water, exactly. Okay. Yes. So the boat is there. It's a physical boat sitting on this physical water, but the horizon, where the water and the sky meet are. And up this here. isn't even Feta Morgana. This is just a mirroring effect here, correct? Yeah. Well, and, yeah. And the reason that that's happening is because the current or the, the, the ripples in the water in the in the foreshadow in the foreground are not the same as in the in the background yeah well because the like different wind changes so maybe Correct. there's a lot of wind blowing on this water compared to the water back it's there it's flat yes you know? it's flatter and less smoother. movement on the surface it's right smoother correct yeah so we got that one that one's interesting right yeah so check it out again a globy would tell us that but this and it's bending a little bit you know the a globe would say this is the curve of the earth right here. Right. And this is a, just a, uh, you know, mirage. All right, let's go to the next one. See, not, not being there and not looking at it like in live time. So difficult, right? Just looking at a still photo. So here's the, here's where the horizon is. And then here's where the mirroring starts. Right. I get you it. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. So now let's go to this one. Yeah. Where do you think the horizon is here? Above your mouse. Where? Above your mouse? No. Oh, my, that's my mouse. Whoops. <laughs> I have my mouse on the screen. You can see it, right? No, now I see it, yeah. Okay. I just had so do you think it's right else. here? Or is it right here? That looks low to me. It looks lower. Like, uh, no, in the middle of the yellow part. Right here? Yeah, somewhere over there. Right, Are you? Good, good job. It's right here. A little yeah. bit higher than the line that I put. I would right. say right in the middle of the yellow. Yeah. Yeah. But looking out at it with the naked eye, people are thinking this is the curve of the earth, right? It's just weird how a plane does change. Like it's a, it is the cone effect. You know, it, it looks like it's, it's your perceived horizon. It's not always going to go straight out. What you think is going straight out and then just end. Right. Will it play that? Oh, it will. It Is can it end, though. It can end due to... See, if all of these pictures are taken on extremely clear days, if they were all taken at maximum view distance or ability to view, then that's a, that's a good test. But if some of them are, you know, visibility range four miles and the other one's visibility range is 10 miles, then it's harder to tell because you can't see past whatever your 
perceived horizon is due to atmospheric conditions as well. well so if say, everything is atmospherically blocked off, then you think that's where the horizon is, right? Let's say, um, because I really don't know what's going on in this picture personally. I have no fucking clue, right? But let's say I was out here at this wire. I don't know where it's at. I'm just giving an example, okay? Let's say I started out there during the morning. And it looks like the camera is just a few inches off the ground. Like you could tell by the water in the front towards the bottom of the picture. So let's say I had my camera out there and I'm looking at the horizon and there's this island in between. And I'm I'm and I'm and I'm watching um you know I'm I'm time lapsing the whole day. So I will see the horizon fluctuate throughout the day in that footage. So my visibility will change. It'll be further compared to, let's say, like, so in the morning, I could probably see further because it's crisp out, not as much humidity during the middle of the day. I can't see that far away because humidity is up, temperature's up. And just having that right there, the fluctuation of the horizon throughout the day, personally, in my opinion, debunks the idea that the horizon is the curve of the earth. You know, this physical curve of the earth, boats aren't going over the horizon. They're going into the horizon. Yeah, horizon is your convergence point. For, yeah, you know, where the top meets the bottom, right? Where the top meets the bottom. And for whatever that is, whatever you're looking at, whatever height you're at, it's going to change. Right. Right. It could be, like I said before, if the if the if if it's a foggy day, your your horizon could end up at six miles instead of on a, an extremely clear day. Maybe you can see 10 miles. Yeah. It's interesting, right? Mm, it's all due to like, when you think about space, if there's no particles or we can see that far, maybe we can see the moon and it is really far and we can see it so clearly because there's nothing in the way. And, and we can't see from here to China for that reason. We can't see from here to China for what it's not big enough. It's, it's all just becomes a line one. And if we could see from here to there, it's because of the atmospheric distortion. The heat waves, the particles, the oxygen, the water, the, you know, all that. Isn't it crazy? It's like, if the Earth is flat, why can't I see China? If the Earth is flat, we'd see the sun all the time. <laughs> and, and just those couple things that I said, which goes on and on and on, not to mention the chemtrails that they're adding in. You know, blocking right. all the crap and making it hazy all the goddamn time now. You can't even look up at the sky without seeing a blur for a sun because and it's all bright as hell because it's being magnified by the crap. We got a caller backstage. Should we bring him on? Yeah, I think man. it's someone that's very interested in the horizon. Come on. Someone that that films the horizon probably more than anybody I know. Oh, nice. <laughs> really? He's always out there. Let's bring him on. Our boy <clears throat> Travis. What's up, brother? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, man? I must have sensed something in the ether. You guys are talking about, uh, you know, what you were just uh, saying, Austin. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to hijack anything. I just want to be here in case anything comes up that I can contribute to. But, uh, yeah, I agree with what you said uh, just a well, minute ago, Austin. Well, before I go on to the next topic, what if – here, let me bring them up. Let me ask you, what do you think's going on in this picture here? Oh, uh, well, I that's a Fata Morgana, first of all. So okay. it's, it's the most dynamic uh, – <clears throat> mirage event that, that is out there it's always constantly in flux um so i can already see just by there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven layers of you know distortion and displacement um it's it's just it's a fascinating fascinating discussion but uh i yeah so where do you think the horizon is right here <laughs> that one that one is a bit tougher to that one for me I, i've said a number of times that there is no such thing as a superior mirage in the way that it has been described to us so when you're looking at this image here if you go to the stern where you can see the prop wash that's the stern is the back the back of the where you can see the wash at the back you see my right here yeah right there right there okay so now if you just go to the left to the horizon which is down below that's where that's where normally everybody's going to assume that the curve of the earth is right here. okay the object is over 
<laughs> you can clear. Uh, you started cutting out, Travis. Or is that me? No, that's him. He, he might need to run in 720 or a refresh. What do I got to do? Turn the camera off or something? Maybe? No, just turn the camera quality down just so it seems like it's just eating you up. Uh, I'll just turn it off. There you go. I'll just turn it off. But it just sounded point. like you said that this is the horizon. No. That's the <laughs> default. That's the default when people look out and they see that limitation, even though they see something above it, like you can see this thing above the ship. <clears throat> so this one to me is a bit uh, is a bit tougher to to diagnose, but I I do have images like this where I'm arguing that the horizon is at the very top. Yeah, and that's that's where the horizon is. I've right, argued right. that a number of times. Right here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also, so all, like I said, yeah, these, ahead, this is a good test because it is a still photo. If you're if we're all standing there, mm -hmm. we're going to know where the horizon is. We're going to see left and right and up and down. You know, these still photos, it, it um, I'm not sure that we're debunking or de or not, you know, if we're proving anything by it. But it is a good knowledge to have that your perception can be as skewed by just looking at something that is on TV or the Internet or pictures or whatever. But. Well, my point of showing this isn't to debunk or prove anything. It, it's well to me, yeah, it is to prove something. It's to prove that the horizon isn't a physical location. Sure, because that is one of the things sure. I tend to come across when I'm talking to people about the shape of the Earth and these new ideas. Is that we have all been conditioned to think that the horizon is the physical curve of the Earth. You know, we're all taught that boats are disappearing from the bottom up because it's going over the horizon, right? going over the curve of the earth and these pictures can clearly show us that the horizon is an optical always an optical thing the fun the part is i was one of the kids that they showed the bill nye video too that that one like as you can see the boat right. goes over the curve of the earth <laughs> right i remember and so, yeah, those. it's in and, and so for our generation that is what everybody thinks is that as soon as the boat disappears then the earth is curved and it, it and it left such an impression of brainwashing on our society absolutely man absolutely because uh, it, when we really you know when you really think about it if there is no physical horizon then there is no physical globe mm -hmm. Because it has to have a certain <clears throat> circumference, especially if it's measurements. Change, right? it, it, yes, exactly. That's what I mean. If we had a time lapse of someone recording the horizon throughout the day and seeing the fluctu, seeing the distance, the visibility at one level, changed, sure, at one visibility, yes, right, yes. Then that e enough alone to me tells me that the what we see as in the horizon is way. It's never a physical. And they, place. Well, and they also say like on in the Weather Channel, it's going to say your visibility clearance today is what, and and a lot of the times it's ten miles, bro. How yeah. is your visibility clearance ten miles on the Weather Channel? If I think we've talked about this before, back yeah. in the day, but how's your visibility going to be ten miles on the sea? And they're talking about on the sea. They're talking for nautical stuff, um, I believe. And, and how's how's your vis vision going to be ten miles if it's uh, curved? Right. If you can only see three miles, you know, the six foot. How tall? How high would you have to be to see ten miles? A hundred feet in the air. Who's going to be a hundred feet in the air? They're not talking to anyone a hundred feet in the air. You know what I mean? One hundred percent. Can I share uh, my screen? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so what I have uh, here is a capture. Are you screen of, sharing? You're not screen sharing. I was going to share my screen or share a video. So let me see. You're just explaining it before you bring it up. I was going to, yeah. Yeah, um, go ahead, though. <clears throat> sorry. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. So guys, uh, we yeah, do so have the link pinned in the chat um, for calls. <clears throat> just letting you know, guys, line it up, line it up. Um, basically I'm on, uh, Lake Michigan in Milwaukee last year, and <clears throat> I had some of the most beautiful, pristine, I think, you know, distant shots that I'd ever seen. And I felt like I was just simply looking into infinity. It was just so evident that you just kept going and going and going. So yeah. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you what I experienced and what I felt. Um, but I'm, I, I'm just going to show you at least one of the videos and kind of say a couple of things about it. What are you doing with your screen? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no, I'm just playing with my camera. I was trying to see. Oh, okay. Christ. I'm trying to figure out which way is the best way to do this. 
take the mask off. <laughs> Good lord. All right, let me. Right, pull I, don't it up. What I'm, I don't know what I I'm. You. I don't know what I'm sharing just yet. Okay, Steve. well, let me. No, no, I want to. I want to share this video window. So how do I do that? Open and the it, window first, and then screen. Yeah, it is. It is open. Hold on, real quick. I'm sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, right. You're killing Jeez, the show, boy. dude. You're killing the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killing the vibes, Travis. Killing the vibes. You guys are making me making me freak out, man. Stop making me freak out. Don't freak out, bro. <laughs> Keep it mellow, dog. Keep it mellow. Entire. I'm just gonna share the entire screen. There we go. There we go. Okay. Like and share, ladies and gentlemen. Let's let's get this shared out. Benny boy, thank you for share sharing out. the link out everywhere. I've seen that you did. That. All right, it should be there. Okay. You are good to go, my friend. All right. So it this boat right here, I think, or do I see it? No, hold on. I'm going to zoom in on the one that I am going to focus on. So I'm, what this are you is a, using? What camera are you using? This is the P900. Okay. So All I'm right. just I'm just showing a contrast here. This is the closest boat that I can see. So we can see the horizon beyond it. We've got a boat right here to the left. Now there's another boat out here that I see. And so now I'm trying to find the farthest boat. Okay. Oh my gosh, I want to go to the beach so bad with my camera. Okay, know, bro, come to my house. <laughs> I live at the beach. You do too, but I can go an like hour hours away, away from here. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you if you get a look at the entire ship right here, you can clearly see that the horizon goes beyond the ship. Yep, I can see that. Okay, and this shape doesn't change; it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller as it just keeps going. And I just kept waiting for something. And it, it just never went away. The P950. We're all badasses. Flat Earthers have the best cameras. You know, but if you look at that, <laughs> if you look at that boat, I'll just go back real quick. If you look at that boat from this distance right here, you know, how far away would you say that boat was? Here you got one. Which one? Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll tell you. Go ahead. Either, either, either one. Either one. Either this one? one's close, and then this one's and that's far a sail away. Boat? That's just like a, a. Are you zoomed in at all, right here? Not yet. Not yet. I'd say it's three miles away. Okay. What from what? You're saying the boat from that boat? A couple hundred. No, feet? no, not no, no, not the boat from boat. <laughs> just how far away would you say the sailboat was if you were to just look out with your naked eye? A three mile. to five miles. Right. A mile. Yeah. So that with your naked eye, you can't even see the hull. Are you zoomed in yet? You're not zoomed no, in. No, no, no. Here, I'll, no. Then I'll, it's I'll, like I'll, a mile out. Now I'm zooming in. That and then that is full optical right there. That's the farthest yes. I can zoom in. But anyway, so that that this wasn't as long as the video was that I thought it was coming up. Let me show you one of the ones that's far. Like I just kept waiting for it to disappear. So here's another one. You're like, please, please go away from me so I can get this footage. <laughs> yeah, please keep traveling in that direction. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the, if you watch it going from left to right, it's traveling either south at the same latitude or longitude. Or it's, you know, going farther and farther away from me, but it just doesn't seem to change. And where are you elevation? Like wise? Uh, I'm probably about 200 feet up um, off the uh, shoreline. Okay. But anyway, I just uh well that's yeah, why, I, dude. You're looking you're higher, so you're seeing more over the curve of the earth, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh anyway, I just had some really great footage from that that trip. Uh it's on my channel. Um, but uh thanks for letting me share. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. The horizon is the a fascinating. Work. Yeah, please keep getting all these shots, man, because you've like uh I've learned a lot from what you were getting and like how you were explaining it. Even the Globusters, they shared one of your videos talking about the mirages and, and the Phantom Morgana and all that. And I was able to, a lot of that made sense to me because, I mean, still when I'm looking at a lot of these pictures, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at, man. And Well, and here's here's my, my theory in a nutshell. There's only mirage. There is right. no inferior. There is no superior. There is just mirage. So where is the image and where's the target? My my whole point is is images should never be taken as fact. Uh, I dis I disagree. 
Well, it depends what you're trying to look for, I think. I mean, you if if all science begins with observations, then you're because if you say that, Mike, then all of these observations over water that are debunking right. curvature, right? Would be pictures, out the pi still images, video is another thing. Multiple pictures, so you can see you have a different. Oh, okay. well, I will say, effect. playing with my two dimensional camera, two dimensional picture is just a hard to pr be proven fact. Yeah, time lapse would be better when it, we're looking well, at the it, horizon. Again, though, it depends on what you're trying to establish. Like, I can agree with what you're saying uh, to a certain extent, but if you were going to use the same target on one day and you frame it the same way, click, and then you go back three days later and you frame it the same way and you click it, and then when you look at those two different images that you would have had to have had and you see them that are they they're offset. But, you know, so you set up in the exact same way. The only thing that could have changed would have been the air that you're looking through. They would have changed the target's position. So in my opinion, that's when a still frame is uh, helpful because you can contrast it with other results. I mean, I understand that a video is just pictures. When you think about it, it's 60 frames per second, 120 frames, whatever you want to call it. It's 60 pictures per second. Um, so yeah, a picture is used or whatever we, whatever, and it's hard to even dis right, to discuss what a picture is, but yeah, sorry, I think video sorry, is just sorry, a much sorry. clearer, a sorry. Much, sorry, video is just a much clearer for evidence as fact, in my opinion, when, when a picture can be like such optical illusions can be multiplied when it's two dimensional. Here's this, here's an optical illusion for you right here. We can't see through, uh. These uh, mirages, but we can sure enough see through this astronaut right here. <laughs> or am I the only one seeing through him right here? What yeah. is that? Where is this from? Um, shout out to uh, Question the Answers. He sent me this clip. Nice one. Yeah, he's he's. Is this actual footage or? I am from the moon landing. Nobody's seen this footage because they're hiding it. <laughs> was this a? Oh, was this on a show? This was looks like yeah, it was like actually clip. on the Al Jazeera news or something. It was a clip them talking about the amazing triumphs of the moon landings, you know. Mm. But yeah, that shit's wild right there. So funny. Hmm? All right. Anything else, Travis? I got someone behind you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Nope. I'm good. All right, Thanks brother. for sharing those videos, Travis. Yep, yep. Appreciate it, guys. <clears throat> Appreciate you, man. Thanks for calling in, brother. All right, who we got? We got the legend himself, FMX. What's up, brother? Oh, my What's man. <laughs> I was no, waiting for no. him to fucking show up. What's up? Late to the on, party. Gentlemen. I didn't even know y'all was on. I finally got home, done for my workout, pop onto YouTube. I'm like, oh, the Mellow Dome. Been on for 30 minutes. Like, what the... Can I call me? <laughs> hey, what's going on, chat? How's everybody doing? Hey, I seen you call me earlier, but I was stuck doing yeah, the homeschool stuff. I knew you'd call stuff. me back. You're so. <laughs> I knew you'd all seen. This. I knew you'd seen we'd be live and jump on this motherfucker. Yeah, yeah I knew you crashed a party. Yeah. No, I live on YouTube with the rest of the world, so eventually I was going to see it. He's got the see-through THC hat. I love it. That shit looks cool. Right? Everything's yeah. see-through, bro. Yeah. Astronauts yeah. are see-through. <laughs> Perfect timing synchronicity, bro. He's right in Synchro speed. bros, back at it again. Check it to record. Let's begin. <laughs> no, like a good see-through astronaut. Ooh, yeah, baby. All right. So, perfect time, bro. You can watch this video with us. Um, um, I have this great video. Pull this up here. So I don't know much about this. All right. I know that this is fairly recent. Um, shout out to Taboo Conspiracy. He dropped this video and I think he got this video from Flat Earth Banjo USA Japan Brazil, the Flat, o Flat Earth Banjo guy. And we'll be playing a clip of one of his live streams too. But apparently a PhD geophysicist has came out to uh talk about the shape of the earth oh and by the way chris we're doing everything like everything flat earth for this stream everything Great. flat earth so if you got anything new ha. <laughs> <laughs> i know you don't think there's any new shit out there no i no, I, I never ever ever have uttered those words i said i'm waiting on a new stuff waiting on a new stuff 
There's definitely new stuff. New people coming every day like this nah, guy right here. People are great, but I want new information. And I love that hearing too, people's bro. revision. No, nah, I haven't heard nothing new. I, heard I don't nothing. know, man. I think um, uh, Sh Shane St. Pierre, Alan from Space Audits. Who's figuring uh, stuff out? Who's doing what, the figuring what, out? What's new, what's new to you? They're doing some pretty cool stuff. I'm Are learning all kinds out? of new shit. Yeah. Teach me. What'd you learn I'm understanding today? more about the ether. That's Let's definitely go. new. Like definitely what? new. All I knew was the word. And yeah. I know more about the Michelson Morley experiments enough yeah. to talk to my well, children no, that, about no, it. Well, that's great. I'm glad you're learning. But I'm just, I mean, in general, and just in general, not that there isn't good points to make because absolutely there is. Okay. Well, we're going to play this. Play this here. And you tell me what you think. This is PhD geophysicist. I cannot pronounce his name, but well, I, I do I, have his credentials up Alfonso right here. Media. Evas Gonzalez Lopez. Damn, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, he's a PhD from the University of Sao Paulo. Okay. And he specializes in seismology. Um and yeah, so let's. He's out of Brazil. He specializes in the movement of the Earth. Pull this up here. Yeah, the only time it moves is during a damn Earth. That's race. right. <laughs> I, I wish people would understand that. You'll know when the Earth moves. Trust me. I felt one. I fucking felt one. I was at Ruby Tuesdays, and I and I looked over at my friend, and I said, "I feel sick." And I looked up at the bar TV, and it was swinging back and forth. And I was like, "Did you feel that?" And sure enough, it was an earthquake. The vertigo kicked in right away where I was like seasick. Why is this still on here back here? Okay, now we're good. But All yeah, right. that was wild. Earthquakes are wild. All right, let's get into it. It's 12 minutes long, but it's full of gravy. Let's see what he says. Also, ladies and gentlemen, this is the call-in show. If you guys wanted to call in, you can hop on backstage. We'll bring you on. And all that good stuff. And we got some more uh, more things to cover after this. Don't go anywhere, guys. Please hit that like button, share it out, and let's continue. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm going to answer a question from someone who asked me about the shape of the Earth. Whether it is spherical, pear-shaped, or flat like a plate. Okay, let's go. Pear-shaped it is not. Only a fool would believe Earth's shape is like a pear. <laughs> There's a reason why some researchers did say Earth is pear-shaped. It's because of the distances in the Southern Hemisphere, all that. But I'll try, but I'll try to answer those who think Earth is pear-shaped. But it's not pear-shaped. I'm sorry about the astrophysicist disgrace Tyson, but no. He can be an astrophysicist, but he is not a geophysicist. So no, Earth is not pear-shaped. <laughs> JJ Hemcrete, let's go. So let's now move on to the two real <laughs> options. A globe. You're goddamn right, Benny Boy, shape. THC Show Live. FMX Radio. When I first heard about the Flat Mr. Earth model, <laughs> I heard it from a person I hold in high regard, and it was more or less like this. I became extremely nervous, extremely irritated. I'm not the type of guy... So he gets nervous and irritated when he's being presented some information on this. Hmm. ...guy who gets irritated easily, but when someone asked me about the flat earth model, and he insisted on this subject... I got so mad, I started screaming at him. The reason why I became so irritated is that the person who was asking me this question works in my area of study, which is geophysics. And he was supposed to know the answer for this question. So this person told me I was a closed-minded person, and my response to him was that he was into conspiracy theories. Then this person asked me one thing, he asked me to go to this YouTube channel and watch a couple of videos to try to debunk them. So I went ahead and watched the first video and told him I could easily explain that video. You're welcome. I watched another video and told him I could technically explain it. 
I watched the third video and it was getting hard to explain. I watched the fourth video and said to myself, it's getting too difficult to answer these questions. I watched a fifth video and video oh, after video, it. I started to get extremely nervous. I got so nervous and I started to ask myself, why was I getting so nervous about this subject? <laughs> That's everyone. That's how Frank And I am not the kind of person who gets nervous That's about this subject because I always I knew Earth was a globe. Then I asked myself, who taught me Earth to be a globe? Who taught me this was the correct shape of the That's Earth? what happens to everybody. Was it my elementary school teacher? My high school teacher? Wait a minute, we have to discuss this subject. After a whole month, the person who first asked me about the flat earth asked me again if I had been able to elaborate and debunk the videos I had watched. I was still nervous about this subject and told him I was still analyzing the videos. <coughs> As the time went by, I started taking this matter more and more seriously because this was bothering me a lot. The more I looked into it, the more I thought it all made sense. It's like an itch you can't scratch. Right. You know, like it just that's no, how it was for me, you, definitely. <laughs> you think you know the answer, and then someone call that's I use it. You know, it's in a self defense mechanism that kicks in, and you're saying to yourself, Well, I've got to answer that now. And then when you can't, something happens. But that's the thing, we've been conditioned to having all those answers, right? You know, like, like it's a security blanket, but our answer was. Ha ha ha! Yeah, right. That's that's crazy. You're that's our answer. That, we didn't really have an answer, did we? <laughs> no. <laughs> what was our answer? There was no answer. But now we understand that. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of answers. I don't know, but that's it's been it's uh, liberating, lie. you know. Yes. And then also, you find this newfound feeling of what's the word like not. I guess exploration, figuring things out, like um, the journey, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's into yourself. You start to realize what is it that you really know, and that breaks down your entire cosmology and your of yourself. Your entire yes. biology starts to change because you're thinking differently. Your body is reacting differently, and your brain is starting to calculate things differently. And it's reading the TV and all these advertisements as propaganda, and you're starting to see the world for what it truly is. Yeah, it's pretty wild. <laughs> it's so wild. It's so wild. But this is what ha this is what he's explaining. He's going through this process, just like maybe the Owen Benjamin thing, where he's yelling at people, saying, "Yeah, I can't be a fucking flat earther." That's why he's nervous. That's why he's upset. I couldn't be. I couldn't be actually becoming one of these people. And and what is these people? Someone who looked into it. Someone who could doesn't who can't debunk what the you know the videos and whatnot. After this video, I got a good video because I ran into some flat earthers and uh, that guy. Person. Yeah, the guy who I ran into, he's like, dude, there's millions of us. We're everywhere. Yes. We're everywhere, dude. And it's like there's probably he's I guarantee you this isn't the first Ph.D. physicist or there's so many people out there. You know, in my opinion is I think there's more closet flat earthers than there are vocal ones like ourselves, you know or people in the chat, I think there's way more that keep it to themselves, whether it's relationship or job status or public status or whatever issues they they're dealing with on their own. I'm not judging anybody. You know, you speak on your own terms whenever you're comfortable. I'm not, I'm not being like that, but I'm, I'm just saying, I think there's way more people who are behind mm. closed doors than there I, is the ones who are vocal. I disagree. I think that, uh, when something happened, maybe, maybe because I don't know, but when it happened to me, something made me, I had, because I maybe because I told my, what my dad or something and no one wanted to listen to me. So I had to find other people. I had to find out, am I crazy? Cause I found out on my own, like you either get the information from someone else or you find out on your own, right? You're either someone like says, Hey, the earth is flat. You should look into this and you do, and you become one or you just figure it out by yourself. And nobody told you that. I know people who like used, went through someone else or went through a video or went through the Bible or just, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I found them on my own and I'm sitting there scared when no one wants to listen to me. And I'm thinking, to, I got to find others. I got to find the people. My, I got to make sure I'm not nuts. Yeah, that was what was going through on in my head. 
You want to add anything, Chris, before I keep going? Uh, Are you here? Go ahead. Okay. All right, all right, all right. I did not have this subject discussed in classrooms during my college years. I know many of you who are watching this video now might be saying that this is the most stupid question on earth, but if this is a stupid question, why is it so hard to answer it? I watch some globe-believing people answering some of the questions, but I have to say as a geophysicist that these globe-believing answers are completely wrong and to a certain point, ridiculous. Some mathematicians want to answer questions about geophysics, and they have no idea what they are talking about. Preach it, brother. On this Flat Earth YouTube channel a little while ago, he presented some evidences quite interesting where he got to film an island 30 kilometers or 20 miles. A very small, very tiny island. And then this mathematician told the videographer he had to use an equipment to measure the air pressure. I am a geophysicist, and I know this equipment is not used for this kind of experiment. I also know that there are many factors that will show errors when measuring air pressure. Even if a cloud goes by, it can interfere in the experiment. We could use a high-precision GPS equipment called RTK. This is an expensive equipment, and in the whole country of Brazil, there must be only 100 of them. Even the university where I worked, the University of Sao Paulo doesn't have one. Perhaps the Cartography Institute of Brazil has one. Isn't there like over 11 million flat earthers in Brazil? Something it's like really that. high in Brazil. It's so high. And, oh man. A and lot. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think their population is huge in general, you know, and that's uh, another contribution. Also, probably because uh, Iru Landucci is just crushing over there, maybe. <laughs> I don't think censor internet censorship outside of America is much different. Yeah, probably. I, I, I wanted to add, too, that 20 years ago, I, I would have never known this guy. I would have never known his thoughts. But but with technology in place, it's going to backfire on the, all the lies because we're able to spread information instantly. We're able to translate people from other countries and and come to find out, uh, I'm sitting like, like I just told you in the previous story, I was real scared and had to find people. We'll come to find out there's friggin' bajillions of us and people in other countries that are thinking the exact same way as I am that, that live a completely different life on the other side of the world. It's like, yeah, we're not as alone as some of us feel we are, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's pretty cool. The internet like this can bring people like us together, you know? I don't, that's... You know, there's pros and cons to all of these things, and we need to use this technology also for our benefit to try to, you know, gather as many people as we can, soldiers, if you will, spiritual soldiers. And, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to the shape of the earth, to me, it's not even really about, you know, picking, is it this, is it that? It's just having the ability to have this conversation and to have that mind open enough to to handle a conversation like this, I think really broadens your horizon and being smart like, enough to know what it's clearly not. Yeah. <laughs> just having the ability to talk about it, I think really opens up your, your mind to many different ideas. I think it also changes the way you might even look at yourself. And, you know, a lot of this, cause at the end of the day, all this for me personally leads back to an eternal an internal thing, you know, like a self-reflection on myself, you know, it changes the way I'm looking at the world and at myself within, you know, there's maybe things I didn't notice about myself that I do now. And, you know, it's like th this information helps my growing process, this growth process, this journey. And there's many people who are open-minded to many topics, but still think that this flat earth is ridiculous or stupid, or it's a psyop. And, um, I, I don't I don't think so. I think it's important to also be able to question where we live as well. And let's you know, it's OK to have these conversations and more and more people are becoming comfortable with it. It's less taboo. I mean, and then when there's people with PhDs who are going to be coming out and saying it, I think that encourages more. Maybe he has students that listen to him 
Maybe he has students that follow him. You know, maybe he's having conversations about it to his class if he's if he has that, you know. Who knows? Yeah, that that whole nervousness of like like he said he was nervous. I think that stems for a lot of people. Like just the discussion. Even if I was to listen to a globe explain why he thinks it's a globe and not say a word about flat earth. Like you're it's so taboo to talk about something that's so basically known in society, right? That's right. what the indoctrination and the anger and and why people get mad at you for trying to bring up this stuff is because it's so widely known that how dare an individual think otherwise, right? It would it's blasphemy, but clearly we know we know what's going on. But yeah, you, you like you said, it's now it's table talk, and I think the reason is is the TikToks, the the YouTube Shorts, and all these things that people are able to get this instant information and see otherwise than what they've been told. Finally. Yep. Even when the tables tilted, censorship, shadow banning, all that good stuff. And that's why it's important to have things like uh, Dave's app, the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, Zodiac Clock app. There's also uh, Shane St. Pierre has created his own uh, Flat Earth model. Um, he created his own website. Uh, let me grab that real quick. I'm going to keep playing this video. Then I decided to get in touch with the videographer. One of these 100 equipments existent in Brazil is mine. So we are going to do this experiment again using this RTK equipment I have, and let's see the result. Now answering the question about the shape of the Earth, I, as a scientist, can't talk about the shape of the Earth at this moment because I'm still studying it. Sorry, guys. I can't say it as a... All right, so check this out. Check this part out here. Watch his face when he admits it. Earth, I, as a scientist, can't talk about the shape of the Earth at this moment because I'm still studying it. Sorry, guys. I can't say it as a scientist because I'm still studying it, and this is a very complicated subject. But I can tell you about my personal feelings about this subject. The original question by this guy was about my feelings about this subject. So... I'm sorry, everyone, but I am a flat earther. I am 100% a flat earther. The Look, dude, he smiled when he said it. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone, but I am a flat earther. I am 100% a flat earther. Look at that. <laughs> That's the first time he smiled in this whole video is when he's saying, I am a flat earther. Like, you know, <laughs> I just thought that was cool. Fucking flat earth. The earth is flat. I am still studying it. I need to answer questions, and there will be plenty of difficult questions I will have to answer. Not just me, but other geophysicists need to be able to answer these questions, but I am declaring it to you right now. I might be the first geophysicist to declare the Earth is flat. I have no doubts about that. I don't think he is. Maybe. Maybe, but I think there's others. As far as he knows. Here is the... Yeah, right, as far as he knows, of course map of the flat earth if someone wants to know more about this map if someone wants to know more about the flat earth he or she will have to study hard we don't have many sources out there we will probably need to start from scratch we have very little literature about it we don't know everything. We need to study, and every day we will learn something new. This model makes sense. The navigators of the past used an instrument called the astrolabe. The astrolabe was created to work on a flat earth model, and it always worked. Yes. I know this is considered to be ancient knowledge. I know it might not seem to be very scientific, but seriously, I have been in the position to denounce Flat Earth. I screamed against it. I got very nervous about it. But if you have a bit of patience to study about it, watch the very old videos about this subject. Not so much the new ones, but the old ones before the censorship Learn about the astrolabe. You're going to find a lot of inconsistencies in the globe model. For example, the Antarctic Treaty. 
You have all these countries getting together and deciding nobody is allowed to go to Antarctica to explore it. If I go to Antarctica, if I even get to reach Antarctica, all my fellow Brazilians may suffer the consequences for my actions. So I find it to be very strange. Why is it that we can go close to the North Pole where... Yeah. And if you're interested, guys, we were just talking about that on that last episode that Austin and I did about how old the Antarctic Treaty is. So, like I said, it was gravy show. It's been going on in, in what we think maybe now uh, hundreds of years, not just, you know, back when they say. And also that China was the, you know, I always like to let people know that China was the very the founder of the Antarctic Treaty. But we don't know. We We think it goes back to generations before all this land back with the urban the herbo monte yeah. 1587 clearly states yeah. yeah seven different kingdoms had uh secure you know they're guarding the perimeter absolutely <laughs> interesting stuff. wild yeah go ahead just got a few minutes where there is more wildlife anyone can get close to it but the south, where there are only penguins, why can't anyone cross it independently? Seriously, they spent billions of dollars digging CERN. Why don't we have different stations crossing Antarctica? Why not? These are the kind of questions that make you uncomfortable. <laughs> it's possible that I might change my opinion, but my opinion today is that the Earth is flat. The person who is saying this to you now is not an average person. I am a geophysicist. I taught classes at the University of Sao Paulo. If I were able to teach there, it is, because I was selected the best among the best in the area. Many people were not able to do so. I have a PhD. I went straight from my master's program to my PhD. I was not just a good student. I was the best of all students. <laughs> the most indoctrinated. The program I was enrolled in lasts on average five to six years. A lot of, a lot of I was the first right to conclude there. the program in four years. I was an excellent student. And after me, only two other students were able to conclude the program in four years. One of them is my brother. Yes, I am a geophysicist. I know everything about this area. If this is going to bother someone, I am sorry. There's nothing I can do. This is how I feel, and I have the right to express myself. As a scientist, yeah. I am evaluating the subject as of my own feelings. I am not trying to convince anyone. It is just for myself. After watching several videos and watching the Globe Earthers trying to debunk those videos, I am sorry to say, but these Globe Believers are not in the position to debunk this. I can see you are not geologists, geophysicists. Ah. You guys don't know what you are talking about. Ah. But this is it for today. In my area of work, because I am also a seismologist, I use a flat earth projection. This is not a childish talk. This discussion about the flat earth was once published in a seismology publication in a different format asking the question up to what point is the Earth considered flat in order to gather seismologic data. And this was published some 16 years ago. In my area of work, there have always been people questioning up to what point can we consider Earth to be flat in order to accommodate the situation to the globe standards. But since this was a direct question which has put me in between a rock and a hard place, in my personal interpretation, not as a scientist since I am still studying it, the Earth is flat. Another smile. Sorry for those who might become mad about this, but... He loves his awakening. Oh, so Everybody Go loves their awakening. bleach, you dumbass flurf. <laughs> <laughs> you better not have kids. <laughs>
Hell yeah, dude. That's cool, right? <laughs> Fucking more cool. and more every day. All over the realm. That New shit souls. is cool. All right, so here's another one. I'm going to play this. This was me the other night. So, you know, at work, I work right next to a lake, and there's this beautiful shot of the sunset every night. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to bring my camera into work tomorrow, and I'm going to get a shot of the beautiful sunset. I'm going to bring my solar filter, too, and see what it looks like, you know, as it's getting lower in the horizon because it does that morphine thing due to the atmosphere, so much atmosphere between us and the sun. And... um. So yeah, I bust out the camera. It's about 8.15 in the evening. And this happens here. You guys got to pay attention. My audio wasn't that good, but uh, here we go. I got, a, I got a solar filter on so I can see all kinds of yeah. yeah I okay, so this lady, she walks up first. Okay, and this so mind you, I'm minding my own business and I'm out on the deck shooting the sun and a couple walks up. The wife walks up first. The couple is also with some friends of theirs. I could tell they got some drinks from my job, you know, and uh, they're having a good time. Right. They're having a great time. And they just come up and she starts asking questions about the camera and the sun. Can get all the way on. it. <laughs> He's right on it. Oh, oh my goodness. That's cool. Wow. And then you can just. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Here, come over here and look at Now that. she calls her husband over. Come on here and look at his camera. Now her husband thinks thinks he's slick, right? Because then I realized what he was saying. He was like trying to feel me out. I, he was saying things to feel out how my response would be, you know. But at the time, I didn't realize it until he said a certain word, and I snapped back. I looked back at him. All right. So listen to this. He, you can tell he's feeling me out. Yeah. Wow. Your camera is absolutely still. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's the first little hint. Okay. I didn't catch it then <laughs> until he says the next thing. But he's like, Your camera is perfectly still, but the sun's moving. Okay. Oh, and you're going to wait for When does it get to the vanishing point? You know about vanishing point. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, wait, what you know about vanishing point, Willis? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, what? <laughs> What's that? Wait, wait, wait. So I snap back. I'm like, club? I'm like looking back. I'm like, what do you know about the vanishing point, right? And then his wife says this. Are you flattered? Fuck yeah, I am. Uh, I mean, you can Fuck hesitate yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, wow. Let her finish the question. <laughs> Jesus, are you a flat? Yes, I am. <laughs> I mean, I let her finish. She's like, "Are you a flat earther?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and right at that moment, that they just came we're all out, fist right? pumping each other, dude. We're high fiving each other. I'm like, "Yeah, that's what's up." You know, that's crazy that they cool. came out and asked you just like that, though. Yeah, they had their friends with them, and you could tell their friends weren't flat earthers because they were not. They're just standing there watching, like looking right, with. Like, this, let's confused. see our friends hey. embarrass themselves. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, and then they come back. They're like, yeah, they're flat earthers too. Their friends are like, oh shit, you know? <laughs> dude. We were talking about chemtrails. He's like, there's no way that thing is 93 million miles away. Okay, listen to what he says here. Because I know better. That's right. <laughs> yes, it is biblical cosmology. So yeah, definitely. Hell yeah, you're not alone. Damn right. There's millions of us out here. Oh yeah. That's right. Millions of us out here. <laughs> Dude, that was cool. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We talked about chemtrails. Um, after the sunset, I recorded or I, I stopped recording, talked to more, talked more to them both. And it was we were both saying the same thing. It's so cool to meet someone else out here, you know, like it, it was very, very cool. So I just wanted to show that we are everywhere, man. We really are. There's plenty of us. I am most certainly a level waterer. 
Flat level Earth water globe Earth. plague. A globe destroyer. Yeah, it's spreading and they can't stop it. <laughs> it is. It is. That's the awakening right now is, is the TikToks and the YouTubes. And what yeah. will Flat Earth become next? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, you what know you... what I think. Well, share it with the audience. <laughs> We're live. I think all this is in preparation. Got 87 people here, dude. Hell hey. yeah. Hit that like button, ladies and gentlemen. Like button, share it, keep commenting. It all helps the algorithm very, very much so. But yes, this was this is the finishing of the framework. It is seem to be a certain type of tipping point for the mass consciousness of this realm. And for so many conversations are going so similarly in different languages and uh, seemingly, you know, unknowing people like you just showed us randomly engage and, you know, un foreseen scenarios it's only a matter of time before like okay well after everybody gets that it's flat and that seems like that's the point and that, then what everybody's gonna ask the same question that i'm kind of stuck on now like now what what's next how why is it flat is it you know we can point to literature and occultic books and storylines and whatnot but i think it's everybody's gonna eventually come to the same next part would be well it has it has something to do with us our visual conscious perspective and what we choose to view and why we choose to view it. Because when we get to a certain point and think of flat earth, you start realizing like, well, I chose to change my belief on this after certain information. Well, then that only means that it only takes more information to change your view again. So what piece of information would be so substantial to get us to shift from one altering a thought process to another and who's doing it? Who's gonna introduce it to us? Will it be the same conglomerate of hidden souls trickling it out on the internet for us to play with and dissect ourselves or will it be seemingly organic coming from some random billy bob online who's like hey i got a great idea what if we do this and we plug in this dirt into this tree and now we can make cloud who knows, who knows? <laughs> you know it's, it's only you know a thought away before it spreads like another wildfire through the consciousness and i think that's where i'm kind of at i i love all this stuff, it still feels just as potent as it ever has. I'm just kind of so anticipating the next chess move of the ultimate mind game of God that I'm just, I'm, I'm just vigorously waiting, kind of. And in, in the meanwhile, if, it's all simulated constructs of our mind that God's letting us, you know, tinker with new p potential possibilities of this realm's environment and our interaction with it. I think that's why so many people are, are, you know, why entertainment and fantasy is so big and prevalent. You know, even suppose the thousands of years at the Renaissance that, you know, knights and armor and wizards and occult messages and, and its own right is just, it stays with us for some reason, as if it wasn't as far as they're telling us. So maybe we're circling back in an odd strange way well we've been here before and mike said something about everything repeating itself like cycles and when um, when you go deep enough in history there was a time where yeah the whole world did know the earth was flat so maybe we are going to be here like we've been here before you know like maybe everything is <laughs> not we you know, nothing new like the, the, i think not, maybe the not only us infinite. personally no maybe I'm the not, only infinite yeah. is like this this different biology, I don't know. Well, I don't know, you know, with resets or anything, I don't know how much I put into that, but it is a very fascinating topic, but maybe that's, you throw that in there. It's very interesting. I like what Larry says right here. He says, the truth is like a rope. You can't push it where you want it to go. You have to pull it uh, from where it is. It's pretty cool. But it yeah. Could the, it could be the passing of this mortal conscious existence that gives us the answers to, you know, that we keep searching for unconsciously or subconsciously so, so when we sh for sure some, you know mortal freaking do we know if we just right to, you know then you phase and all of a sudden instantly you're connected again as you were before you were born you're like ah mm. yeah ah that's right i get it and then all because all the fearful stuff it's gonna stay here it's here it only exists here i don't see how it could vibrate any higher outside of this place it wouldn't make sense go against everything we've learned about this place with emotions, color, frequency, sound, everything. So it makes sense that, you know, we would go back from once we came 
And so we're our bodies, but our consciousness is not our body. So it would vibrate to where it's na uh, naturally supposed to be at the water float, the ball floating on top of the water, not being constantly pulled underneath it. Exciting times in this vast simulation. You got to love it. It's a giant video game. You're a part of it. Your storyline. Yeah, you're no NPC. Don't be no NPC. I mean, Come you on, create now. your own storybook. It's my favorite, bro. Create your own story adventure. Now, it's a good thought process, Chris. I like that. that. That whole like, do we carry? You know, when we're born into this world, is that our is that our first existence? And and when I say existence, like in the realm of the physical world, and then when we go beyond, what do we? If anything, do we take anything with us? Do we take something with us? Are we still alive in a, in a sense? Do we move on to something else? I don't know. And not ah. not even here on a different plane of existence, but the just questions. gets the mind going. Yeah. These are always the conversations we always fucking lead to, fellas. Why? Why? <laughs> it's the biggest yeah, man. one. It's I mean. interesting, dude. Like, what do we take with us? You know, because, yeah, I don't know. In, this life, it's, it's an amazing journey. It's been a crazy experience, you know, and it does seem like there is nothing new under the sun. There could be cycles to all this. Like, uh, a lot of us are figuring out you know, you've heard like the Hutchison effect and um, a lot of these other people creating some type of free energy, um, you know, anti-gravity type scenarios, you know. And I think they could already have had that honed down. And I mean, when you look at I, I'm careful with some of the old world stuff I look at. But when you look at some of it, you do see that they've had there was a time when they had this technology before. You know what I mean? I want to pull this video up here and see what you guys think about this. It's a little five minute clip. Pull this up. Pack it up, pack it in. It's that time again. Hey, that's real. Actually, yeah. So while I play this, I'm going to step away. You let me know what you think about this, Mike. Everyone in the chat. Thank you, everyone, for being here. This is the Mellow Dome. We're the best souls roam. You dig? Hit that thumbs up. Share it out. If you're new here to the channel, make sure you hit the subscription, hit the bell. We're having a good time. Shout out to everyone in the chat. We got Mix, Licks, Trish, Trish Clark. We got Sean, Nick, Larry, Mojo Shop. What's up, Canuck? We got Jason. I see Nick in the chat. What's up, brother? We got Austin Shippy has a lot to uh, Austin has a lot to offer um, in, on that Mellow Dome's uh, membership as well. So hit that membership and get those perks. Get his membership only streams, membership only video uploads, all kinds of shit. My boy is doing yeah, big things. Yeah, we should be doing here. another one here soon. We should. If you guys yeah. want to join that with. Also, there's a lot of streams of me and Kaylee behind that paywall. I need a few. Um, so yeah, we wife. can do lots of streams together for sure. Hell yeah, dude. For sure. We got Chainsaw Cat. What's up? Hippie Shake. Benny Boy. Stacy Sunshine. Much love. Who else we got here? Our boy Derek. What's up, Derek? What's up, Johnny? Johnny Sizzle. What's up, Johnny Sizzle? Um, Justin Johnson. Jeremy Bird. Much love, Jeremy. Shout out to Jeremy real quick. Let me just grab this. Jeremy Bird throwing down that $20 super chat on the last show. Gravy. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate all y'all, man. Jeremy sent us a, I don't know if you can hear me, but Jeremy sent us a really nice throw blanket for the couch. 90 in the live chat, 64 likes. Hit that like button, y'all. Share, help that algorithm. I know you're not hitting dislike or you're just not hitting it, right? So go over and take two seconds to hit the like button or I'm going to show up at your house and get you high. Here we go. Do I have it right? Oh, right here. So this is a throw blanket that we got for the couch from Jeremy Bird. Shout out to Jeremy. Thank you, brother. Oh, Kaylee. Nice. Yeah, Kaylee loves it. She loves it. Perfect. And it's the perfect color for our couches. So, it's a blanket? Yeah, like a throw blanket Jelly. for the living room. Oh. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, next time I'm over, you better watch that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. All right. Man. All right, so we got this up. I'm going to play this. This is... Uh, Victor, I can't pronounce his last name, but it has to do with anti-gravity and levitation. And you guys just give me a been a call. On also, guys, this is a call-in show. If you wanted to call in, share some thoughts, or you have some questions, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. 
And uh, you're more than welcome to call in. Mellow vibes are mandatory. Shout out to Sean with the $5 Rockfin tip. I appreciate you, brother. Shout out to Mark over there in PSYOP within a PSYOP. Let's play this video here. So a man named Grabenikov from Russia. Uh, Grabenikov was kind of a uh, non-conventional scientist. He was an entomologist, did a lot of work with, uh, you know, bugs, entomology. And his favorite thing was to go out into the steppes of Russia and into the various outer hinterlands and camp out in the summers and uh, study his favorite subject. And on one of these expeditions, uh, he started seeing some weird effects. This, this is all explained in great detail on the AkiliNet site if you type in Grabenikov and his flying box or uh, gravity platform. But anyhow, the, the, the result of this was to uh, show that there was a, he found a certain bug that didn't fly, it levitated. And this was, uh, he'd, he'd put this bug in, into a little uh, vial or something, and he saw this vial jumping up off the lab table, jumping up and down. And of course, this is Isn't patently impossible based on... It reminds me of the whole bees thing. You, you heard the, about how the bees can don't vibrate? Fly. Oh, no, I just yeah. know they don't fly at night. I don't know how to explain it properly. Um, maybe you do, Chris, or someone. Something about bees? Um, the flight of the yeah. bees. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bees, their, uh, their their wings aren't aren't. Uh, I can't they're not like aerodynamic or no, something, well, right? They're not proportioned to the correct size of other avian, of their weight uh, of um, animals or insects in general. They're right. like half the size than what they actually should be. Huh. But so that what they are do what they do do, and beetles do it as well. They can vibrate their wings, which is what they're for, to resonate their frequency of their body to the environment of their surrounding. So wind and shit, external forces do absolutely almost nothing to them because of that factor. It's kind of you know, that same video. You say like, like the wings aren't, aren't getting the air displacement? Right. This, this disproportionate to its body. So like, right. for example, a, a hummingbird is like twice the bit, uh, size of the actual sure. bird. An eagle, three, four, six times as big as the damn bird. So how is it flying? Then? It's, uh, it's vibrating. It has four wings, vibrate um, counter to each other on both sides, like bipedal, but, you know, wings on both sides. And they, they just they flap to the point their whole body, its resonance, its actual resonance of its body is changing on a cellular molecular level to where it's environment the you know that force that vector that ether the whatever you want to we want that's why they're oh, like flying in like 30 mile an hour crosswind right exactly it's like nothing so uh the gentleman back in the 20s i don't remember his name that um he took like thousands of beetle wings and put it mm. in a tray and put uh, co uh conductor leads copper leads across all of them and it led up to a battery and then those leads went up to a handle like a, if you could think of the handle of like a scooter i'm an electrical scooter so you would just stand on this oh, little bro pad. that's what this is about to show yeah well it, oh awesome can't wait to see it. we'll play it let's see it yeah so, dude well, it was something just like say. that yeah it's, it's very this is probably what i was going to explain and then you the video explain better right. than i can thank you jess thank you for mr simulation kick we'll talk about that later though Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. We got some things to plug. All right, let's continue here. Any time of normal physics. So he got into this, and he found out that the, the bug wings themselves uh, were creating an anti-gravity phenomena under certain conditions. And, of course, what we have here, if, if you analyze, I, I think I found the bug. It's actually a beetle. And if you analyze this bug structure, you see a hexagonal pyramid structure array throughout the entire bottom wing of this bug. Turns out that beetles have two wings. The top wing is is called a wing cover and sure. what the beetle does is it lifts this wing cover up right. and then it flips out its lower wing. What happened? Yep. No, I was saying a shell. It has a shell. Oh yeah, the shell. Okay. Yeah, but it has properties though. What he's explaining is, is the properties of the shell. You'll hear, you'll, you'll hear, you'll hear. It's awesome. Wings or inner wings. Now the, the bug cover protects the inner wings, but when it gets excited or something, it flips these other wings out and it, it flaps these other wings and the other wings, the inner wings flap a little and this beetle goes gyrating around. They can't fly very good, but they sure levitate great, I guess. And uh, anyway, he took a whole bunch of these bug wings and he glued them to like a Venetia blind structure and he put it into, into a little platform oh, he built. Boring. So they, they were all 
it, these bug wings were all covered in here. And he used the, uh, I theorize he used the wing covers as well as the inner wing itself. There's also a kind of a handlebar on this thing uh, with some controls. You can see a thing a little better here in detail. This is wild. Uh, the controls, had, I like, think, had to be like manipulated. Did you see the pot? Like, there's a pie symbol on the yeah. bottom. What's that? That must mean know. something. That 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 whole symbol right there must mean something. And it's like G upward, G gravity maybe, or kind of looks like down. Masonic symbols. Yes, it, it does. It does. Go up, go checkerboard, down, go twist it down to go down. It's directions on how to fly it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see the the toggles and all that up on the top. And the checkerboard yeah, there. Interesting. Looks rigid. In detail. Uh, Terrible welding job. Just gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah for, for the time shit, that's probably <laughs> premium work at the time. Like, Ooh, do better, oh. bro. Do better. No. Yeah, <laughs> better than the plastic crap we make today. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, made in China, baby. <laughs> this thing uh, with some controls. You can see a thing a little better here in detail. I think that's just THC. Uh, Hey. The controls, I think, <laughs> had to be manipulated continuously and probably vibrated to create the same action that the bug was doing. There was also down at the base some kind of a lever, which I suspect controlled the amount of uh, lift he was getting out of this thing. Look at that. That's anyway, crazy. Anyway, Grabenikov claimed that he could fly this thing or levitate it, and it would go around at a thousand, almost a thousand miles an hour. Now you ask, how can that happen? You know, well, he said that there there was an energy field that built up around this thing due to this uh, gravity field building up in the platform, and by uh, this thing building up, it built out a force field that basically surrounded him and protected him from the local environment. So even though he was flying at a thousand miles an hour, uh, you could go. Uh, you know, you could be wearing your Sunday best suit and not get it flutter a bit at a thousand miles an hour. Is that a battery? <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to stand on something going a thousand miles an hour that's two feet square. I just, just thought of something, yeah. too. But, uh, Pause that real quick. Yeah. I think of, like, CERN as, like, the, you know, like, what are they really doing there? And, and something spinning, right? And you think about the Earth and our sky is spinning. Are they trying to recreate whatever is happening here by spinning something so fast, some kind of magnet to create a force field. And that's why they have these really large areas. And that's why there's so many of them. Cause they've, they figured like these kinds of things out, like, are they doing anti-gravity um, by just spinning a magnet in place or finding out what, what this technology is Have they perfected some of this stuff? Yeah. That's my whole point of showing this because of, like that's, astronauts and that's, yeah, that's my thoughts on this because, um, I think that they have hijacked everyone's technology like this and are using Tesla it for themselves. And all combined like, it. For all we know. Okay, so this isn't a popular opinion in this flat earth community, but I have tracked the ISS and I recorded it crossing the sky right when it said it would. Now, I'm not saying that there's people in this thing that probably smells like shit and has hair everywhere and terrible wiring, like uh, terrible wiring. They got pizza. Right, pizza. Well, it doesn't smell like shit. There's no smells in space. So they right. Oh yeah, it smells like steak. <laughs> right, steak. But um, but there is something up there, Burnt and steak. I think that NASA is more of a hidden propulsion program, you know. And I think that's why they give us the idea that it's act it's aliens from another galaxy when it's really us this yeah. whole fucking time, you know. I think there's all kinds of things they have in the sky. What's that? Um, jet propulsion laboratories and. Yeah, they no. also have another That's... laboratory, bro. You just reminded me. They also have a very interesting laboratory. Let me get the name. It is called the Electrostatic Levitation Laboratory, and it's <laughs> at the Marshall Flight Center. And they're claiming that they have devices where there is no propellant system at all, and that eventually they'll be able to use it instead of rockets. But supposedly they already have things in the sky that are using the electrostatics. Now, I don't know how many of you have been here. If you're new or you've been here for years, you've been watching Globusters and others finding out that in nature, you see the spiders doing the ballooning effect using electrostatics. And shout out to Good Times for All, Witsit and all them talking about electrostatics when it comes to gravity, creating the downward vector. And, you know, do, I do feel remember, like in my head, I'm connecting a lot of dots here. Do you remember you know in 2015, I mean? right before Flatter took off? There was, yes. this, there was this marketing ploy for this uh, hoverboard. 
that was about to go on mass production for sale. Let me tell you how really? fast the, I was the, the ice one down. or no, like no, the no, magnetic no, 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 one. Yeah, they had a magnetic one. Oh, I was saw with the ramp yeah. and everything. Yeah. No, 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 there was two things that came. There was one video that looked real as shit because yeah. it was loud and you didn't, didn't seem like a real prototype that they just needed to dial it in so it won't be so fucking For sure. Noisy I was sold it, too. You know, cheaper. It, it, it would probably still would have been like five, six, eight, ten grand. I was, I was about to shell the money out, vehicle. man. But yeah, people, but people were lining up. I forgot the company's name. But, Levitron or Levit Leviscade or something. Was, I think it was on the level of like hover, hover something. Oh, okay. Uh, Hoover, okay. Or what, it, it don't even matter because they got before the year was over. But when the marketing like Back to the Future the style, Back to yes. the Future style. Baby. Yes, it but it was on its own awful, track. Man. You know what I'm saying? No, they no, had no, no, not, not, could, the one, not the one I'm talking. About. You could go in there. You go over water. Oh it was, it was god, that shit. might not have been real. And it was, it was, it was loud. I'm telling you, it was loud as shit. And what, like it was like drone fans or what? No, no, no. It, it was uh so from, from what they said, it went off this patent, this electro that they Static. explained what? how Earth has this electromagnetic field, which no matter if you're globe or flat, we all agree on that. Right. So they're saying all it does is resonate the same fucking expect almost almost verbatim the way this video explained it. So they explained they how they, the like, oh, they figured out what I saw in Endic. I saw this yeah. video, you know, many years ago, and this and the information with bees and all this has been stuck with ever since because right, right. Fucking, uh, flying to me it would be my number one chosen superpower right out the gate knowing about <laughs> so, the handlebars yeah, you know, definitely but, explained that you've so, seen so when, this so, so when i seen that so when they were saying i'm like yeah i can't wait i can't wait next thing you know somebody it, it, it gets bought out and then this other company along the same idea comes out and they're promoting it i'm like okay more people know how to do this shit fast forward a few months until uh 2015 kind of gets here that first april first comes around oh it was a joke we got you for months all oh, y'all thought y'all thought that was real <laughs> bro let me tell you how the internet was was it called the lexus the hoverboard no 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 it wasn't it wasn't a, it, it was like was there was a kickstarter no, for it it, 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 was, it was the one that out. it started with an h and whatever it was got bought out and there was one that was on like a magnet board like they had a like let's say you bought a warehouse and you installed this magnetic under this electromagnetic underneath the the ground and then these boards would float across it as oh, if it was yeah, like okay. anti gravity, you know, you wouldn't be touching the ground. These things would float on this electromagnetic board. Well, just so like it's home, not home. out of the realm for them to hijack free energy technology. Yeah, they've done it with water cars. Mm -hmm. We should all be driving. Chris has made water, water engines yeah. since he was younger. <laughs> bro, share <laughs> a little bit of that, bro. Share that. Chris has yeah, been making that shit. Back around. Every, every few years, somebody figures it, rediscovers it. But right. I, I, just I, reinvents I, I, it. I want nothing to do with hydrogen cells because them boys will After what happened to them? You. Yeah, well, my <laughs> uncle, back, back in, this was back in, 20, in, in the early yeah, 2000s, like 2010, and uh, my, I was doing docks and decks with my fucking ham and a uh, nail uncle, uncle, so your golden gub boxes been in prison. You know, you only ever work for himself, right? Self taught, you know, handyman. He can do fucking pretty much anything. One of those roughneck dudes, you know, old school cats. And when uh, we, he got to meet uh, Ed, whatever the fuck his name was, because he, he stayed in Florida and he would drive his uh, Volkswagen <laughs> love bug around with that plastered all on the side. Oh, ask me how my car runs off a 100% H2O. And my uncle happened to meet him at uh, one of the um, local meets, swap meets, where they would show off you know, the local uh, garage and ventures and tickers. And he was a weed guy and everything, but he also did make for his own fertilizer because he got a farm out there in Zephyr Hill. So he would take his cows and horse shit and everything and resell them at the market. Anyway, at the time, he was, you know, he was hustling, always hustling. Docs, deck, whatever the fuck you want, you build it for whatever the money. And when he ran into this, he was like, but he just saw dollar signs. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yo, teach me your ways. And he's like, yeah, let's come here, Jim. I'm going to teach you. Just what I'm here for. I, I feel like God taught me this, so I can teach everybody out. Homeboy made. Uh, I got on my uh, uh, on my Rockfin. I still have my hydrogen video. It ain't on YouTube no more. They keep striking it. All on Facebook. Yeah, that's the fucked that up too. shit. Yeah, and keep, it's your footage. It's, it's bro. my footage. Yeah, it's my. I recorded it with my bullshit ass cell phone. What all did you said. have that was hydrogen? The water engine. How? Well, what everything. We, we've had we had electric bikes, trucks, motorcycles, cars, mm -hmm. uh, generators. You pretty much name it. You can put a motor on it. My uncle uh, finagled a way to hook it up to where it was powered by a cell. We had solar panels that were pat 
powering the cells to power bigger, more high voltage uh, devices and crap to the point where you could run off a gen, like I said, generators off of it and stuff and power other things. It was awesome. All of them just hydrogen. And then he used, we used all clear plastic tubings and containers. So that way, when we installed it in your engine or when you came to look at our stuff, you just had to pop the hood and you could see how everything's flowing. Literally, it was like a bubbler, uh, the actual cell, and then leads going to your battery. Very, you know, Home Depot stuff that you could get that he wanted, you know, he didn't want to make it cheap as possible. You got good, thick, you know, plexiglass, you know, um, to make the cells out of. We cut our own plates. We drill all our own plates. We cooked up the leads ourselves and everything. We had a, a salt vinegar water mix and everything that lasted like six to eight months that you didn't until you had to change it out. And you could do it yourself. We, my uncle taught you how to do it just like the homeboy did, showed you you know, the correct way. And even if you fucked it up, it didn't really matter. You, it was almost impossible to fuck up this car. And it would take your exhaust emissions down to nearly zero. We didn't, my uncle, he never learned how to do the whole conversion kit. We did a, uh, a like a supplementary kit where it would just, where you'd still need fuel fossil fuel to run your car because you know we, he wasn't half and half, long. Right? Yeah, homeboy yeah homeboy fossil they murdered him but, but yeah by the time you know <laughs> we were trying to really get in and then all his shit just magically disappeared mm. just like the recent homeboy a few years ago or another 10 years what 10 years after that 2020 which years ago somebody else came out with in florida and i have no where the fuck he's been now either there's a black guy pulling water straight out of the air don't know where he's been oh yeah dude they were even <laughs> no, before they got him they TV. were um <laughs> attacking his his system yeah, they, they would go drop it off in the neighborhoods that needed right. the water. Yeah, and then they would come sabotage it. Yeah. yeah. There'd be shotgun holes in it and shit like that. Right. And ain't Crazy. nobody doing, ain't no poor people going to sabotage no free water. Ain't no, <laughs> yeah, it's Richie. That. Yeah, it's people that yeah. don't want their industry messed with. All right, it's let like me play the power. Rest of you know how much money the power company makes? Yeah, right. Right, yeah, they don't want competition. They have a monopoly on all this shit. Dude, there's a light bulb, I think, in Boston somewhere at a fire station. It, the light bulb has been there for a hundred years and it still turns on. They had so, to the make the light bulb there's, expire. There's well, oh, then there's multiple. Then there's no, yeah, that's uh, the, California University has one that's been on for just as long. Well, they they made it like all the companies realized, hey, if we make a good product, we're only going to sell one. We got to right. make them last a certain amount of time so they come back for more. Yeah, you know, it's the virus. Laziness. I mean, they, it's they Microsoft wanna, like to virus for anything for, else to sell or do or service. Like, yeah, we just want to sell the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to play the rest of this video. We've got a couple minutes on this. This, this. this picture here shows him sitting on the ground. And these pictures are much better oh, if you get on the KeyNet site. This is the platform with him on it about three to six feet above the ground because here's the shadow here down below. Nah. Now, you could say this is all faked. But if you get into the other things he did with uh, shape, they're, they almost mirror the stuff that I discovered, and it, it, it proves, I guess, that you know there's either two crazy people in the world, or there's two people that have found the same discoveries. So I think that this is a valid phenomenon, and I'll, I'll show you why. This is what he says here. Next slide is a uh, micrograph that I took of a beetle inner wing. This is at a 100x. If you look closely at this thing, you can see rows of bumps all along the bottom of this wing. Uh, and it, and the, each row is staggered uh, from the next row uh, next to it. And this is all over the surface of the bottom of the wing. Now, I don't know of any aerodynamic surface that has bumps all over the bottom to help it fly better. If you blow this up to 430x, uh, you can start to see some of this microstructure of the uh, cells that form uh, where these bumps are. The next slide at uh, 970x, you start to see what these bumps that stick up are. They're a uh, hairs, look like hairs or uh, fibers that, that grow out of the center of these hexagonal cells. And of course, this harkens back to my basic shape power discovery is that each one of these, because of their uh, shape going down to a point, is creating a magnetic field. And remember, a magnetic vortex. field is a rotating piece of vortex in the ether. In the ether. What? <laughs> Bro, they're like mimicking nature, dude. That shit is crazy. The only reason that water vortexes 
is because it 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 would pull a vacuum if it didn't. So I want people to understand that when they see a water vortex, it's not the same thing as the electromagnetic vortex. Well, the water has to have. I'm a, and I know this because I went to school for it. But the water has to have air displacement. Whatever whatever the water is flowing into, air is leaving. So if you're putting like, let's say you're filling a jug, as you're filling that jug. You know the water, the air is coming out of the jug. There's air in the jug, and as you're putting water into the jug, the air is coming out. Out of the so, hole, right? So if you if the water were to cover <laughs> the entire hole, it causes a vacuum, and nothing can go in or out. You know, so once the that's why it has to have a hole in the middle, and that's why it causes a vortex is because air is displacing through the middle, and and it happens. And it's getting pushed out of that hole. Right. Okay. So check this out. This is speculation station. Right. But black holes are described the same way. Their energy is getting shot out. Uh, right. And then straight, it mainstream, to go somewhere. Science, mainstream science is saying that ocean eddies, which is what we just seen on the screen, is the vortex in the water. There's massive ocean eddies in the ocean. And they say that they're mathematically equivalent to black holes. And then my assumption is because if we live in an electromagnetic field, then there is this counter space somewhere, which could be the dark sky up there, the counter space. You have space that we're in, then the counter space. And what if that downward force is the push from this black hole? Like, because if we live in an electromagnetic field, there's this vortex happening. That's what the ether's doing. We see the sun and the moon and the luminaries going around in this vortex. And then I don't know, dude. I'm going on speculation. Maybe I'm losing y'all, but I just see a lot of similarities here, you know, and that's how energy is, you know, being created. I personally I am not know. into the black holes in outer space theory. I don't believe well, that they exist. Well, don't think of it as black holes sucking everything up in outer space. I'm not, but. Right. I know. You know. Yeah. Just but if fact. you think you live in an electromagnetic field, yeah, at the For center sure. of that, is there, there, but, is, but there, there is I've something. talked about that plenty of times where I, I, I'm very interested and intrigued by that video of the plane looking down at that weird vortex of energy that right. we see when we look at flat Earth videos and things like that. Um, I think that there is something at the North Pole for sure. I think if, if the Polaris could be the only black hole or the opening of that energy or the center of whatever we're, is spinning around, you know, there would be the vortex of, of energy going up perhaps. Right. Maybe you're right. That it may be up through the middle and then back out and up through the middle and back out cyclical kind of thing. Just a bunch of speculation. Just for sure. For sure. Of course they aren't verifiable. They claim that they've taken a picture of something that you can't even fucking see. But then again, I'm learning that there is other spectrums of light that we don't see that these devices can see. Okay. So I don't know. I'm I I think I'm done like writing things in the sky off as fake and gay and just taking a second look at it all, you know, because I really don't know, you know, as far as I know, there's no no curvature and I don't think we're moving. Well, the top um, up to tell, let, let me jump on that, because like we said in the beginning of the, before the show started, the only reason that I like to call it fake is what? Because we know that what they're providing us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the Star Trek narrative, that type of that's all fake what NASA wants to present us. But then again, I also feel like there's information they're keeping from us, like with the free, uh, the propulsion, energy, all these things. So if you take a deeper look in certain topics, right, you can find some truth. Um, they just want to sugarcoat a lot of it with bullshit and give us different size comparisons and, you know, always try to make us think, think that we're insignificant, you know, when... I, I think know. it's the they just want you to think that they have the answer. They want you to think that that you know what the answer to life is and where you came from 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 your birth that somebody already figured it out and here's what it is. But it's all a complete lie and when you figure out who you really are and that what your connection is to this place and it it gets a lot different. And they don't want you to know that because I think you gain like like the guy saying flat earth you gain something. There's a there's an awakening inside you and you get you become something more i believe when you figure it all out and become more connected with everything i don't know what that word is you just ascend in a way um 
I think you become yeah, a better better version of yourself once you start to grasp your connection. And to control people, they don't they don't need anyone connecting with themselves. They don't need anyone figuring out who they are because then they won't need the system. Well said, Mike. Um, Chris, go ahead and plug your stuff because I gotta take a leak. All righty. I'll be right back. Mike have been streaming almost daily, especially Mike's been streaming yeah. daily on yeah, the yeah. kick.com. And uh, I've reinvigorated and reformed my TikTok. So if you've been looking for FMX over there, I am not under FMX for I am taking a new path to guide, uh, to gain and attain another new winer audience. And that, of course, would be the gaming community with all the millions and millions of uh, new kids every day across the realm on the interwebs getting connected. And as you know, all of our various FE channels eventually, no matter how many you start, inevitably get stunted and shadow banned and then we get stuck in our own echo chambers over and over again talking the same information to the same people which is fine it's fun it's lovely uh, lord knows i absolutely adore this community but for us to grow we have to go places that you know we wouldn't normally go to but yet we find things intriguing there i myself um not the biggest reader but you know i find enjoyment in reading and experiencing games as so many other people so i've started a new channel called mr simulation something a little bit less controversial as far as the algorithms and artificial intelligent algorithms go so it's allowed me to reform and start um teaching the new audience in a more subliminal manner so my edits although they are gaming they have subliminal messages in them rather be getting them to think about alternate realities, different concepts, using the guides of, of gaming entertainment to hopefully uh, and intentionally bypass those shadow banning um, words and whatnot, you know, saying shit, you know, flat earth a lot over and over or anything else along those lines, you know, too many times or too many posts, you know, it, 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 it gets just stunted. It's just what it is. You know, <laughs> I've been stuck on 30,000 subs on my Facebook forever now. And ever since I've been tagged, it's, will just will not grow and uh same for most of our youtubes and not that we don't get new subscribers trickling in here and there but how do we obtain you know hundreds of our thousands of subscribers at a time you know and you know i don't think yeah and what's you know you want to have some face. fun you want to have some damn fun oh, we are having an absolute blast over there and boom all the time. So much <laughs> We play a little bit of everything. I even do some single player games. Uh, Mike plays a whole bunch of different ones. And uh, we're just getting in front of a different eyes that I would believe we would almost never get in front of if we didn't come at this strategically. And doing this, you know, taking everything with a grain of salt, as it were. And, you know, not, not thinking it's too sweet or too sour. A nice little midline. Because it's, it's still work. I'm still editing. Still doing the same thing that... Uh, been doing i'm just kind of changing trajectory a little bit hopefully again to bypass that very very mean and cruel uh politically correct algorithm so I'm there's a lot of gamers who are definitely uh awake to a lot of things i find that to be the case also shout out to zach zabala he created a bunch of flat earth maps on Fortnite. Oh, yeah. if you guys are interested in that um you just go to the search bar in Fortnite and you type in fe and there'll be all kind of maps that was made by Good Times for All, Zach Zabala, one of the legendary globe busters over there. Um, yes, for all you Fortniters out there. I haven't been able to jump on with you guys yet. We really should. Maybe after this stream we can because the family ain't here. So if y'all are down after the stream. Oh, I'm, I'm going to eat dinner right after the stream, but then, yeah, then I'll be on. Okay. All right. All right. People are asking any Division 2. I don't know. I play what everything. Means. I play Division 2. Let me know if you ever want to get on. Cool. Remember, yeah, go to yeah, kick.com. If you're into video games, go to kick.com forward slash uh, THC show. Whoops. Had that on. Forward slash THC show. Or what is it, Chris? Mr. Simulation? Mr. Simulation. There you go. It's the only one on there. Shouldn't be too hard to find. Exactly. There you go. You should see my uh, artificial mug on there. <laughs> Can't miss us. You, can, you know who I am. I got the high vibration. Jose well. Valdez, PUBG. Yes, we are PUBG fanatics as well, my friend. Definitely Absolutely. Now. Go at us over there right now, Jose. On Jose PC. said Fortnite is trash. 
Y'all just tell me what I need to download on the on the Eric Xbox. I play them all, man. I play it all. But yeah, man. Uh, I wanted to show some of this stuff. We can talk about. Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? X. Here we go. So people are waking up, man. And I just want to pull this up because mainstream will still tell you this is a conspiracy theory. And guys, you can call in, call into the show if you want. This still is a call-in cool show. Um, but yeah, let's. I just want to go through some of these. So we got, what state is this? I love golf, Sean. I love golf. I play that new one, Masters. Got a bunch of gamers in the chat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys need to head on over and hang out with us sometime if you're just bored and looking for something That's to right. do. And we don't just talk about games while we're there. We talk about life. We talk about the truth. And we, hey, man, you know, <laughs> we do all kinds of shit. It's really funny watching the four of us. When we get all four of us in the party and we're playing Call of Duty, man, we get to get into the energy and laughs going really, really big. I fucking suck at that game. But it's fun to play together, bro. Who cares? You get to get yelled at and told how much you suck. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun, man. All right, so check this out, bro. Check this out on the screen. This is uh, Tennessee passing a bill to stop the spraying in the skies. Okay? It says prohibits in intentional injection, release, or dispersion by any means of chemicals, chemical compounds, some substances, or apparatuses within the borders of this state into the atmosphere. Okay, so that's Tennessee. All right. Now we got Kentucky. All right. Oh, Kentucky yeah. doing the same thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, to make findings. Send me those links. I got to send these to my mom, man. I will. I will. Please. Findings and declarations regarding the dangers of atmospheric polluting activities and the Commonwealth's authority to prohibit geoengineering. Okay. So they're even using that word. Now we can go over to which state is this? This is Rhode Island, ladies and gentlemen. They have also um, have a bill here, the Clean Air Pres Preservation Act. It establishes regulations to prohibit stratospheric aerosol injections. Okay. Exactly. Solar radiation modification, experimentation, and other hazardous weather engineering activities. But this is a conspiracy. Okay. Well, now it's not since the since the you know since they came out and said it. It's now it's not a conspiracy. Who cares if we've been? They trying still to will. For yeah. 20 right. Years. They still fact check when we slap a little warning label on. Oh, it. yeah. They stay. Oh, and how does that work? They've been fact checking this crap for years. And now all of a sudden, what? Mm -hmm. They just don't. But no, they still fact check it. But they're saying right here that it's legit. This one's Illinois. They want all you right. to think it's a conspiracy. Right. This one's Illinois. It says creates the Weather Modification Act, provides that any form of weather modification shall not be allowed in the state, including the seeding of clouds by plane or ground. Cloud seeding, we're all very well aware of the cloud seeding. This is Illinois. All right, we can keep going, ladies and gentlemen. We got some states waking up. All right, we got South Dakota here. Okay, we got another one um, to prohibit the, intention, the intentional release of polluting emissions into the atmosphere. By cloud seeding, weather modification, excessive electromagnetic radio frequency. That sounds like some CERN shit. And microwave radiation. That sounds like some CERN shit. But uh, yeah, they're stopping that in South Dakota. And then we got Connecticut also doing this. The adoption of the Clean Air Act in Connecticut. Okay. And yeah, that's that's all of them there. That's pretty freaking wild. We got a caller. All right. Call number? What's up, Lowry? What's up? You guys talking uh, talking those things in the sky? Yeah, man. What you got? How you doing? We've been we've been dodging them for the last couple of days. Now we get a clear. You know, we get like one clear sky out of every four. Yeah. So today is our little gift from you know the uh, those that we will not mention. It's been pretty good out here. I don't know about if you what you've seen, Chris, but I've seen some. 
beautiful skies past couple days. Oh yeah, we've had beautiful Florida this last. We've been hot as balls, but it's been nice. I've got I've got a number. Anyone? Hey guys, hold it down. My wife is calling me. Oh, all right. I'll be right back. I've got a number in New York. If anyone's uh, in the New York area, Maritza Davila. She's our um, she is our she is our assembly woman. Um, and I got numbers for that. I'll just put them in here. So I've already called. I've already called twice. So. But I'm just gonna put it in the chat. Um, you know, I want you want the let's see, hold on a second. Five one eight four five 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 three seven. So if anyone's listening in New York, um, that's the number. It's Maritza here, Maritza um, Davila, and uh, just call in and like her her assistant will answer. And the more people that the more calls that they take, even if you don't get through to her, which you probably won't, um, they just take notes on as many things that come through. The guy had he, he didn't have any idea what I was talking about when I called in. I was like, I was like, you've never heard of these before. We need to call in live. I know, right? Just like make. A- <coughs> I mean, they're uh, let's see, it's uh, it's past. I, I would actually say do it now, but it's past their time. But anyway, there's a number there, so you can uh, just you know call in on just keep calling in because um, like they've definitely ramped it up like over the last probably year i've just noticed because i've always been noticing them so i've just been counting the the frequency so <clears throat> you know if those other states can cancel it new york can too you know yeah i need we virginia think. to do the same man for my kids your kids all the kids and mm-hmm. future generations to come we need to get rid of these whatever the, you want to call it whatever's happening right now with the whole new world order we need yeah. to get rid of that shit how you guys doing you good fantastic yeah man Happy, good, happy. Otherwise, man. yes, sir. Almost at a halfway part of 2024. Ready? If you it can went that. so fast, Jeez. right? So yeah, started. It flew by for me. Like the days are going by fast, doesn't it? It's mm-hmm. it does. It feels like even more since that eclipse. It's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, it's like what, that. Just seems like it was yesterday, right? It and does. Here we are. It's almost June. Um. You know, I think the, the ongoing shit show, um, you know, in the world is probably making it a little bit more entertaining. Um, you know, uh, when's the other shoe going to drop? Who knows? But sh- there's only four months till the election. So, you know, right. and there's no campaigning months. going on. There's, there's nothing. No- there's no advertisements. There's no anything. Yeah, they know what's going on. You know, you had uh, uh, Robert De Niro. I think you guys talked about it earlier. Did you hear him talking in the streets of New York today? No. Oh, yeah, man. He came out just. They threw a whole press conference that was right across the street from the Trump thing, and of course he just goes on to just badmouth Trump or whatever. I don't get, I don't, I don't care. I don't do blue right. team red. Team. That's what he usually does. Yeah, and so, but then a whole bunch of uh, MAGA people came up and just started showering De Niro with just like, "You're a, you know, some some words, some words right. that I'm not going to use on Inciting here." Exciting right. hate. Yeah, yeah. So it was it division. Was kind of, yeah. So, like, so this God. is the show we get to watch. The show. This is what we get to see. Um, we're part of the back. show. Yeah, we're part of it, but we get also get to kick back and watch this other shit show that's going on. That who knows what's going to happen with it. So, dude. Okay. So speaking of shit shows, Netanyahu. Did you guys not hear him say when he was talking about uh, them trying to uh, get him for war crimes? He says charging him for war crimes in Gaza is like charging George Bush for war crimes for 9-11. Which actually and I'm like, char- yeah. I'm like, hello, uh, yeah, and your point? <laughs> like, I, I, I thought right. it was kind You're of double. Going was, to jail. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was double speak because like, you know, yeah. I think everyone's coming to the conclusion like from all points that Mossad had something to do with that, probably along with, you know, the Bush right. administration. And it's just like, they're both like projecting onto each other. And I was like, well, that's interesting. As long as they right. keep adding a new event, we'll just forget about the last one, though. You know, that's yeah. what I mean. It's it's high it's event season. Goldfish. It is. Yeah. It's high shout event. out to let me shout someone out real quick. We got Flatwater in the chat or Flatworks. Shout out to Flatworks, guys. We've highlighted uh, one of his videos um, talking about that Antarctic Peace Treaty that was on the Urbano Monte map. Uh, his that channel's awesome. Yeah. Definitely go check out that channel. Give it a sub. Very good channel. And hey, if you want to call in, the link is pinned at the top of the chat. You go yeah, ahead and you call in. If, if someone else wants to call in too, I just wanted to pop by and say hello. No, you're good, brother. Yeah. Always good to see Appreciate you, Alex. Jumping on, man. 
I know. Uh, don't you got a show? Don't you got? Don't you stream? Oh it now? yeah. So yeah. So we just did our, our debut of uh, Tinfoil Hat Sombrero this last Sunday. Was the that whole, you and Rico? Yeah, and Rico and Nicole it's and a great uh, show. B. Yeah, we just basically great for a show. Thank you. It was it was actually just we had no idea what we were doing. So the whole <laughs> goal of the show was just let's make sure it turns on. Let's make sure we have sound. Isn't that fun? Make sure we share at least one screen so we can at least do that. And so, like, Rico's <laughs> like, I only want it to go an hour. I don't know what, how this is going to go. And we actually started on time at, well, 7.02, which is doing pretty good for these shows, you know, with our community. Um, and then we wrapped it right at an hour. And uh, I thought it went pretty well. I mean, it's going to be pretty relaxed. Um, I was probably- 30 minutes in, right? But I was at work, so I had to go back and finish it. And when I mm-hmm. went to go look, I'm like, an hour, that's it. Yeah, I think we're gonna do any technical difficulties. No, I wait. think what I was like muted for the first 10 minutes of my first show. Oh my god, I was yeah, so bullets. We no, went, y'all did pretty good. I didn't notice any of the first few minutes. No, we we had help. We we actually we we hung out with Jer a week before and he took us there to the you whole go. thing. And then we did a practice run midweek just because I've seen you know a lot of people just start early, they have to start early anyway, so that gives people time to come in. Um, but we wanted to just like say it's here get it started, make sure it works. And then we really didn't have anything planned. We were just shooting the shit. And I think it's going to kind of go like that for a while. Cause I, I don't think it's the same kind of show as like what everybody else is doing. I mean, it's, it's probably going to be more humor based. Um, you know, we'll, we'll touch goes on with the flow. Yeah. It goes you guys work great together, man. You guys are awesome. Really? Yeah. And then you got that woman perspective in there. She's, she's very smart. I could tell yeah. she, she was dropping gravy on that, uh, iron realm media stream. Yeah, she's a good one. And she's also in the closet, which is even better. So she's eventually <laughs> going to come out of the closet. Um, but uh, no, it's it's, it's going to be fun. We're just going to take it easy and kind of we're probably it's probably going to be in a two hour show. Um, but like it may just be another hour this Sunday. Or we might just go the full two hours. It depends on like I, I've been doing these for a while. Nicole's pretty free at it. She's pretty good at it. Uh, Rico hasn't d- done a lot of these yet. So he's like sort of getting his, you know, his uh, his wings shooken off a little bit and then uh andrew b hasn't uh, he's done a lot of streams but like he's done like the you know the trivia stuff so like getting the chemistry down between the four of us is probably going to take a few episodes but i think it's going to organically kind of fold itself out you know no doing great man it's good stuff good stuff thank you i like seeing new content you know coming out and then you know i've already met you guys you guys are freaking awesome in person so just like hanging out with some friends online i'd like that kind of stuff yeah, and the more the merrier. We we looked at one day of the week that looked like we were going to be like just by ourselves, and it was kind of in that you know six seven o'clock hour on Sunday Eastern Standard Time. Um, and I think we're going to stick to that. Uh, so it'd be, the idea would be to have you know somebody from our community doing a show like in every two hour segment all week long, and I think we're getting a little bit closer to that. Like an FE guide, just so, yeah, just some sort of something you know part of our world going on in each two hour segment of YouTube for throughout the entire week. There's still a lot of open sections guys. So like, if you want to start a show, you know, just figure out where that one little place is. And then there should just be like 24 seven, you know, F E. And there's so many different types going on. You know, we're pretty laid back here. You guys are absolutely laid back. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really uh, like for me, I can just speak for myself. It was like a form of escapism because I was coming across all this information. And at the same time, I was also getting clean, me and my wife. So we had no friends, you know, you had to change person, places and things. So Mm -hmm. it was more of a hangout spot going and meeting my friends. And then when you went to the events to Flattoberfest and Solar Return and you're meeting them and then it's like, you know, you really do get that dopamine hit high when you're going and saying hello to all your friends. The biggest one I ever had. Yeah. (laughs) So good. It was so great. Yeah. Because I I think that's why I appreciate even your kind of content is it shows that. You know, not everyone here is talking heads like, you know, Jaron and Dave, and they're not all talking heads. Everyone's human, you know, mm-hmm. and that's I like that kind of stuff. You and know? you got you got some shows that are more tech oriented. You got some shows that are more based in like, you know, the the experimental side. They're yep. know, describing all these things. And like we don't that's already that's a heavy lifting. It's already been done. Let those guys take that lane and yeah, take uh, that trench. You go right ahead. Yeah, you got that trench, behind. you take it, and <laughs> like we'll just hang out, you know. And then it's like we only get to get together like what once a year, maybe twice a year for lucky. So, like, yeah. this is like the bridges in between when we get to hang out. 
you know, it looks like bro you know, once a year for lucky. Some of us can't even make it because they can't afford. I didn't yes. go this year. I didn't. You go know, last they can't, year. dude. Missed. Some people cannot make it, and I feel so bad. I'm like, gosh, if you if you can just experience it one time, what it's like to meet up with 400 other uh, like minded individuals in this sort of sense, it yeah. will change your life. It's awesome. It's awesome. And like, I've spent probably way too much money on, on traveling for flat earth, but I do travel flat earth. So it's like, I consider that a worthwhile expenditure because I know that I'm not going to get, you know, a lot of personal time with everybody other than on these little things for the rest of the year, but it's just enough polka dotted throughout the calendar that it gets us all through the year. It used to not be that way. It would be like, you know, we had a few shows out there that were going on, <clears throat> you know, and then you just have to bunker down until, you know, there was that one year Karen had two events. So that kind of broke it up. And then she decided not to do that, that second event anymore, which, you know, I understand why she didn't, but it's like, you know, I would like this to have, I'd like a, an event every quarter, you know, we're doing that these event, little, if I didn't go to that, the Melodome would like never happened. So yeah, like imagine just her throwing those events, how much of a branch off effect it creates. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's amazing. This community is growing. And when you go to these events and you feel that freaking energy, <laughs> like yeah. when you're experiencing that energy, I mean, we're still on a high for a good 10 days after the event, you know, yeah. and it's that, that they want to keep away from people that, of course. Energy, you know, they don't what want I mean? a bunch of people talking That's to each crazy, other, about, dude. you know, high level stuff and, you know, higher. Vibration. And I'm sure it's not just flat earth. It's other things that people mm -hmm. are passionate about. It's just that human connection They're, You know, they want to put a division between all of that. So it's important to go out, you know, even locally, like I should get to know my neighbors more. I should, you know that's what it's about getting rid of that division coming together, you know, and then when mm -hmm. people are coming out, we're meeting each other, bro. That energy is off the chain, bro. It's crazy. Oh, and I secretly just like my band doesn't know, but I'm doing a rock show on June 8th and they don't know about it, but I also organized a flat earth meetup <laughs> in Brooklyn during that. Nice. Night. So they don't, they don't actually know that that's going to happen, but there's probably going to be some people, <clears throat> you know, rolling in there with flat earth shirts and they're going to know like at that point in time, but like, I mean, what I was going to say was like the little meetups sprinkled out also like regional meetups are starting to pick up. So like it should get to the point if numbers, if, if math and you know, all the numbers mean anything, you know, in the next year or so, there should be there should be no week or at least no two weeks without something that you get to like within your region that's at least drivable. Um, you know, I mean, I'm seeing a lot more pop up at least. Dave just put oh, his. Speaking of meetups, I'm I'm going to be playing. I'm. I don't have a date set yet because I've been busy with work, but I'm going to request a certain day off sometime, maybe July, end of July, beginning of August. I live right next to a lake. Listen, I'm literally right around the corner and, uh, and there's a nice little beach there and you can rent, uh, canoes or all that good stuff. And there's a nice Nathan, restaurant I'm on, out there. I'm on Melodome right now. And I got Nathan. Shout out to Nathan. <laughs> He's a shout out. Yes, uh, uh, yeah. Calling me on the phone. Uh, but yeah, uh, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt your thing. What, but yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna throw a meetup at this local lake that I live next to. Um, there's a nice little spot. Bring the camera out. The lake isn't that big, but we could still have some fun with the camera and That's the nice. sunset. That's cool. A lake meetup. Yeah, man. That's rad, so, dude. I might be throwing that out there. Anyone living in Florida, you know, come kick <clears> it. <throat> I, Chris. I think, like, oh wait. But we are meeting up, Chris, because we're supposed to go see Deadpool 3. So that's happening, too. We're doing oh, that, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta, yeah so I gotta you can't back out of both of those things. Next, next month, right? That's next month. <laughs> yeah. I, I think yeah, the, yeah. End the of trick of End it. of July, I think. I, like, the trick of doing these is, like, don't make it, like, a, a big event where, like, there's speakers or, like, anything like that. Just make it a hang. Just a hangout. Yeah. Just a hang. And, like, nobody has to worry about it. Barbecue, man. Have some, you know, you don't, you can, you can, you can talk about whatever you want. You know, FE is probably going to be the big topic, but like, it's just like, come hang out, chill out. It's not, there's you picnic know. tables, there's grills right there, literally on the beach. And yeah. you can rent big, uh, I can, I'll go out there early and I'll rent the umbrellas. I'll take up that whole spot when it's just for <laughs> flat earth. There's, we'll own <laughs> that awesome. whole little spot. Shout out to Angela Baby Carson. Go check out her uh, YouTube channel if you're into animals. She takes care of lots of animals, has a really cool property. Go check her shit out. I'm just telling Nathan, why don't you just call in? And yeah, call him. in, Nathan. What the hell's wrong with him? <laughs> call the wrong number. <laughs> Link is pinned at the top of the chat if anyone wants to call in. Thank you to No Longer on the Ball. I appreciate that. 
uh, you uh, definitely added me a while ago on the Truth is Our Comedy, and uh, very much appreciate it. Oh, that's also a great resource to bypass um, the algorithms. Yes. The trueearth.wikitide.org. I also did a show with him. You should have him on and have him explain all that, Mike. That'd be great, actually. I'd be more than happy to. I love creators in this world and what we're doing here. I love anybody in this community that's creating something new or has a website or an item or a thing. Let me pull um, up Shane's uh, website as well, because it's a very cool website. Um, Somebody else has a website, too, other than Dave's, where you can go watch all the videos. You can search them at, at Weiss's one. But there's somebody else that did one that's also the same idea where they've compiled all of the flatters videos in one spot. And I can't remember. Do you guys remember that guy? Mm. Do you remember who did that? It's, I don't know. I, it's been a while back. I think I met him at one of the meetups or conferences or something. Commercial sound and video says he just wants to talk to you, Lowry. You're a big, he's a guy, you got a big fan in the. You chat. don't want to talk to us. Wow. <laughs> Sit tight there, buddy. Did anybody else get to witness Lowry fall off stage in Vegas? Because oh I God, <laughs> I'm never gonna live that. Day I just, ever. I just want to bring that up because every time I think about <laughs> that, and as well as now that I see Nathan in the chat, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I you count know, my so blessings. I walked away relatively unscathed. I was no, you were good. You <laughs> hopped right up. It was like a Dumb and Dumber moment where you just rolled out of it. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? How close I was to hitting that video board, then it would have been a tragedy. Oof, oof. Like, I, I cleared the video board by about three inches. Now, I don't know how tight that thing is. That'd be a question for Nathan is, but like, if I hit that in the wrong way. Not would have just been me. That video board would have come down on top of Cru or Ch uh, Chief, uh, um, the big chief uh, from the uh, from the flat earthworms. It would have come right down on him. And that would have been a tragedy. But I'm glad that didn't happen. So <laughs> count my blessings. That's too funny. Mm. Was it on video? Yes, everybody got it on video, and they don't let me forget about it. <laughs> Matter of fact, Stavely will just just bring it up whenever he needs to, you know, to put me back in my place. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's what it is. Got to live it up. Got to live for a moment. Man. <laughs> <I know. laughs> talk, talk about me. Talk with me. Talk against me. You're talking about me. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. Somebody. Look at this somebody bad boy right here. This is uh, Shane's website, adl.place, Shane's Flat Earth Model. Um, he took Walter Bislin's uh, What's the stuff. website again? Um, I'll put it here on the... Scroll up or whatever. I'll share it in the chat, too. Oop, I didn't mean to zoom in. But, yeah, it's uh, Shane... ADL dot place backslash Shane's FE model. I just put it in the ch live chat. If you guys are interested in that has all kinds of information on this website. He's constantly adding to it. It's very cool. I use it for school for the boys. When we talk about solar eclipses and things like that, it's very useful and it has good visuals, you know, it talks about, it'll show you the equinox. It explains all of it and it's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, and that's um, it. Looks like there's some sort of little personal <clears throat> personal dome for the position of the viewer. Is that what that is? Yeah, that that's the at? personal uh, <clears throat> dome of vision. That's how our eyes work. Right? Yeah, our eyes work in a conical vision. That's pretty sick. That is super sick. There's also like um, I like that the, he's just basically working as if it's just us and an ice ring. I'd like to see him like develop it um, on another possible like path because I, we, we're still, we still have this whole size of America that's on the outside of the shelf that Admiral Byrd talked about. It's not really covered in this. I don't think but maybe oh, are you talking about extra lands. Yeah. I just, cause like the, the, that's the only, that's okay. the only thing I would say. I can see where that would work as a descriptor and like how it works mathematically. If it's Whoa, personal what is that? <clears throat> you know, what was that? Go back. What? what? Well, it had like there was some other graphic on there. And how's he creating this? Oh, that was just uh, points of the sun. I just deleted it out of the whole website. I wanted to pull something else up <laughs> um, that you just mentioned, Alex. Oh, Let me um, find it. this is it's called oh, that thing I was talking about, Benny Boy in the chat. It's uh, pastebin.com slash. Uh, it's a, you're going to see it. It's in the chat. That's another page where you can go and like really, really. I mean, most of the people in here have already been through all this, but like if there's some people in here that are on the fence. This is a good one to refer them to. 
um, other than Dave's. I think Dave's. I think Dave's might be a little user friendly better. Uh, I haven't been to this one, but like that's where everyone's like what we need to focus on is sending these links out for people that just are they're too lazy to like actually look people up. It's like you just go here. It's all here. Censor censorship free. You can ask any question you want and there'll be a video on it. And that's kind of what I've been hammering lately, you know, to get people past, you know, the YouTube censorship stuff and everything else. That's helpful to anybody. So what do you think? Do you think there's extra land out there or? All I have is the, 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 that one Admiral Byrd interview where he actually traveled and he said there was a size, you know, at least something the size of the United States that was beyond what he was calling the pole. And uh, so it's not represented From on the that pole map. on the other side. Yeah. So it, does, <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't smash that, that mathematical model by any stretch. That's a really good representation of like how, how the clock works and everything. I would just be curious to see something, you know, that considers a little bit more, uh, you know, space outside of there. Um, at least something that the length of, you know, the United States, which is like, that's all that Admiral Bird ever said was that there's at least that length. Um, and then he came back and that was that, they didn't let him go back. So, I mean, if we choose to believe that interview, if that interview is true and that everything happened was, that was all it, then there probably should be, the dome should be scooted out a little bit further or whatever, whatever it is. If it's, you know, I, again, beyond my pay grade on this one, man, I just, you know, I go with what I can measure, but I mean, it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Because I think about like how, you know, what would be uh like does does the sun go all the way out there? Yeah. You know. Dude, that's... I gotta get one of these a giant like high res print of this map you've got pulled up. I have to have that. That is a must. Yeah. I need I need the A perspective. I need the A map and I need this one. These are like the two most important ones I think right now going. <clears throat> yeah, I have uh like a I think it's a 12 by 12 or 18 by 18 mm -hmm. uh version of this map um but this website gives you a nice high detailed resolution but yeah man i don't know it's a fascinating topic i do lean more that this is it this is all we are i'm not really into the extended plane but i am all about uh the ideas and the stories i know that what's that one book um uh, the iron, the iron, something about the, the iron, iron republic, right? Iron republic, yeah. yeah. So there could be something in there that's a little further in, that's closer to that. I, I again, I can't go there, so I can't figure it out. I do know that I don't can't measure any curvature, so like I know that's right, and I know what flight paths look like in the northern hemisphere or northern hemis, hemis, not hemisphere, but northern or the center part of the circle. You know, I know that stuff. You know, These look like dinosaurs. We have to find like, the Invencio Fortunata. That's what we need to find. There's also like a man horse on that this map and like a bunch of other stuff. Like that looks like a dragon. There's mermaids in there, I think. Yeah, it's wild. Like All kinds griffin. of weird animals. There's a griffin. It's like the land of griffin, you know, and the land of this animal. And like that, they clearly put that those on there just to say, hey, don't go there. This is what we found. Like, this uh, map is from the 1500s, though, and like dinosaurs Imagine weren't the, discovered. The yet. Ayahuasca they were taking back then to see that shit. Right? Look at this, dude. What is that? What is, that look like a man oh, you snake? Don't, definitely don't want to He's go riding. There. They're both. They're all riding <laughs> the man <laughs> snake. That waters, half your body turns into a monster. That's I a know. bad case of syphilis. Or is something. that just like the map maker just had a wild imagination? He's like, oh, I think these animals live down I think here. He's known known that's where Pete is from. That. When they have sex with animals on it, hybrids, <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> the hybrids. Don't go there. Yeah. What is that? What is that thing? What is that? The whale. It's a chopped off head of a Loch Ness. Maybe a whale. What are those? So oh, those pirate shit. Shit. Watch what out for the dang thing? dirty pirates. What in the that what thing? is that? This is they were like, we've ball. seen things upside down. What is that? That's like a giant like saber toothed whale That's or cool. something. Oh yeah. And then you got That's the red a lot cross. Of sails. So what's the I'm red not... cross? Is that like the is that like the uh is that a the... goat in the middle of the ocean? The crusades well, the the crusade ships or something, right? The goats flying or mm. Mm. I don't know. That's pretty wild. That's like Viking ships or something, right? The lions. Show. This is such a fascinating map. I found uh I want to get um uh Vika back on the show to talk about this map because he did a really good documentary called Truth in Plain Sight. Is that what it's called? Yes. Um, and he talks about this map a lot. And now just because of Flatwater making these great videos talking about this, seeing a few other people talking about it, it's just 
you know, revisiting this map. Yeah, absolutely. Right. He's a freaking legend. Yeah, I love him. He's a great guy. I've been a big fan for years. Yeah. So can you go like to where the United States is supposed to be? That's, I think that's it right there. Look at like, yeah. the little nub that is Florida. Oh, that's yeah. the United States for sure. Yeah, right it's here. got the little nub. It's like a little little. You nub. see how the water has pushed everything to, into place of where it is now. That's why yeah. it's like it's. I don't know necessarily. Is yeah. it a Mandela effect or is the is the land well, moving? The Florida c- contractors got there and extended the land. We did that. <laughs> piece, this AP. There's no. There's no mention. There of is it. a lot of artificial coastlines right now. There is, so yeah. there is. In Miami, yes, a Chris, big one, you have a good one. point. You have a good point. And a so lot they, of New York is sitting on trash. Right. They have yeah. artificial coastline. So. so what do you think, like, when they push that water in, you think that's where the keys came from, for where it's kind of – when it sticks out into the Gulf, the highest points of those, the, of those the, that coast on the bottom of Florida became the keys, maybe? Like, right, yeah, right down in there. Like, those – isn't are those mountains right it's, there? It's Bahamas right here. It's Bahamas, yeah. Right. That's so the key, Bahamas. Keys that's those, Cuba. Are those mountains at the edge of Florida? Cuba. That was all connected. It was just washed away by water. Nothing's uh, moved. Not those mountains or those represent waves? Yeah, I like, think those are waves. Waves, That's okay. Like to me. Yeah, yeah, That's what yeah. it looked like to me. Yeah. There's something That's going on right here, sense. whatever this is. That's that yeah. fort. That's that fort. Oh, their now city. Florida. Maybe Star Fort. Star Fort. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, we have forts all over Florida. <laughs> that, that looks like... This makes uh, sense, dude. This makes sense. No, those look yeah. like uh, monoliths. Like, what no, do you call no, it? Yeah, maybe. That looks like Stonehenge. That looks like Stonehenge. Maybe yeah. cities. Um, cities is what I think it is. It's little towns. Yeah, there's more here. So you got some more tributaries oh, as far as like, which one's the Mississippi? That's the Mississippi right That's there. Mississippi, yeah. <clears throat> What's that other big fucker then? That The, the Nile. <laughs> no, that one that must not be there anymore. There's one big one draining. Um, this is what happened. We got flooded. Everything used to be land. It was all dry. No so then the water away. came and it seeped in together. and it made the land where it is now. <laughs> Look at all these. The There's flood, all kinds man. Of them. The yeah. flood. There's if no great says lakes. that there wasn't a great flood. They're, they're not looking at these kinds of maps and stuff. Like it's hard. Dude, no great lakes. No great lakes. Because it got flooded. It's just is Shilago on here? Is Shilago on this map? Did you Michigan's right there. Terra de see oh, this is why Lago. where the names Smell came from. Right like there. aren't they like way older than the people who found America in the first place? They say That's they found I'm America saying. in yeah. which year, but they're using the names from what map? You know, yeah. it's like we were finding yeah. Bahamas. Did w- was the Bahamas found in when in the 1500s or 1800s? Or mm-hmm. mm. the same thing with uh, like there's maps that they didn't have the whole west coast of America charted yet, but yet this map predates that map and it's charted. Yeah, so what's up around what <laughs> so do we it's have a up, lie? What's up around New York? What's up around New York? I'm or sure this is it. fake. I want to see what the name of it is and see if it's like translatable, yeah, or- right. But it's not. Let's I mean, see. Let's see. Is, is it, it new? They called it New Amsterdam. Oh, That's our history books, right? The Gulf of Decast. Really? The Gulf of the Coast, man. Um, what is that lake? That's retarded. The Arcadia, Lago mm. de Arcadia. Not there anymore. That's Lagos. That's Lagos. Yeah. I don't see anything that I even recognize there because you know, know obviously it's been. So you got a little bit yeah, of an inlet. You've got an inlet that goes into what is that? That's probably Nova Scotia right there, perhaps. I'm not used to looking at it upside down, but um Lago de Arcadia. Uh, let me see if I can rotate it. There There's probably a Canada. New- Can't look. This is Canada. Yeah. So if you go down a little bit, um, you're now you're looking at what is that Cape? What is that? Capo de La Lorena? Yeah. Uh that's all. Those are all Spanish. Is that all Latin or Spanish? Is that all Latin or Spanish? Yeah, the Pinta de Mina and the Santa Maria. So yeah, the Columbus family, the Col- Collins, like the these are the big family, the big family, the most po- powerful family, the one that's uh, District of Columbia, Country of Columbia, Columbus. I'm on Col- a motherfucking mm-hmm. boat. Yeah. Don't. Um, uh, yeah, I don't see shit that even remotely has any like names that are on there now. All a bunch of Latin stuff. Make that bigger. Let's see, we won't yeah. go down because my dick can float. Anything on that? This is pretty interesting. There's like nothing like that. That not even other than Shilago. If it's on there, this is all Latin or Spanish or whatever. <clears throat> some is Latin, some Spanish. From from what Vika said in his documentary. Uh-huh. Yeah, where the down. fuck would New York be? It just isn't there. 
Nova Francia. It's all. It's called. That was like before that, France. Well, the French. The French went into Canada allegedly. But yeah. what year was this? Well, they were up there for the, the fifteen twenty-two. Year, it well. says right there uh, in fifteen twenty-two. So, anybody read what that? What year was Columbus discovered America? I thought it was sixteen forty-two. Remember, this map has supposedly Christopher Columbus's son as one of the cartographers uh <laughs> forgot his name oh yeah like he's related to him or whatever yeah it's supposed to be his son fernando colombo he's listed as one of the cartographers I okay think, for this map which is very interesting yeah look what at the, the signatures right thing? there in the middle look at the signatures above him what are those look at those up there right above that yeah unicorny thing uh the scale i don't know i'll put your england Something about the scale of the map to scale. Oh. Something. Interesting. I mean, I could do this map for hours. You almost need to. Yeah, like zooming in is really awesome, isn't it? Yeah, because then there's so many things. Like HD. Mm -hmm. You can't find that on Google. They want to give you like 480p shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's someone's handwriting from a long time ago. Right. Isn't that crazy? It is crazy. I mean, the density of this map is like, like that's what I mean by cyclical. Like, dudes making maps. We're looking at this shit mm -hmm. three hundred years later. Three, crazy dude, crazy map. Oh shit. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off. I need to get some food. Five hundred years yeah. later, where are we at? What I can't do math. Uh, <laughs> it's good to, good to talk to you guys again. Um, yeah, much love, always, brother. Always a pleasure. Thanks for jumping on. Yeah, no sweat. If I can figure out, I, I never used Streamlab. Where am I at here? Let's see. Oh, there Open we go. talk. I can Open kick you. you can bye, kick bye. Me bye. 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 Kick me off. Bye. bye. Peace. All right. Now it's just the three. All right. So, yeah, we can wrap it up here. Um, this was a good show, man. This was a great time. Went through a lot of gravy. I got even more. We can do another one. <laughs> do some more of these, bro. Save some for another one. You know what I mean? But, yeah, is uh, Chris here? He's probably eating or something. Yeah, he's probably eating. All right, Mike, what do you got for us, brother? Anything you want to plug? No. Um, eyes? Shout out to uh, flatearthcoins.com, uh, frankenskies.com, jaronism.com, conspiracymusicguru.com, flatearthdave.com, mellowdome.live. Love y'all. Hell yeah, absolutely, man. Um. We'll be doing some more of these guys expect some more shows coming out as always. Um, I was supposed to record a show with LC King Lucas. He's been super busy with work. So we're going to try and do something for next month. Um, it's going to be a gravy topics. Of course he's great. And um, let's see what else is in the pipeline. Uh, going to have a lot of guests on and you'll be seeing more Mike, Chris as usual. And nice, uh, whenever I have free time, I'm going to, uh, you know, Try and do a stream. It's been busy. Life has been busy. But yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Tony got the decals. Dude, they're the LED ones that flash or do whatever you want. They're awesome. Nice. The dude, flat nice. earth ones. Yeah. Go check it out. THC show.live. They're only 14 bucks. Can't can't go wrong with that. Just nice. support the flat earth movement. You know what I mean? I heard shout out to Nick. He said Melodome was number one on his YouTube channel. So oh, yeah. yeah. For Nick, you the man, you the man. Uh, Chris, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Anything no, you want to plug? No, nothing not much going on in the backgrounds of the back rooms, learning about our inevitable simulation just ahead of the curve, ready for that conversation. People to be obsessed with like me. Like, how does this place work? Why is it flat? Who designed it this way? Where are the fucking walls? How the hell we get here? Where the, the fuck are questions. we? <laughs> Where the fuck are we? <laughs> the eternal questions of humanity remain, and we are here to keep the train on a trucking. So with that said, hope you have a brilliant rest of your week and eat well. You can find me and Mike again on kick.com and I'm on TikTok. We're posting and streaming almost every day over there, gathering the youngsters looking for the new future flat earthers slash simulators. So that way they can be cool kids like you are. So welcome. Thanks for being here. Love the mellow dome. I'm gonna go eat some dinner. True, true, true. Yeah, my family's about to walk in any minute. We can oh, grub, yeah, bro. And if you got man. time, I'll, I'll I'm gonna be on. Right. I'm gonna be on. Just tell sure. me what game to download. I think my my son deleted. Call of Duty again. So um, that was days ago. Download it. He did it again. <laughs> I know I never downloaded it again. That's what it is. It takes a long time, bro. So I don't know. I'll start downloading it now. Just the Warzone <laughs> part, not the whole game. 
Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Compartment. Just type in. Yeah. Word. Yeah. We kicking it. We chilling. It's always a good time. Um, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for supporting the Mellow Dome. Make sure you hit that like button on the way out. Hopefully, you shared out the stream. You guys are a great audience. Shout out to all of you beautiful souls. Mellow Manda, Shifty Eye Shady, Jeremy Bird, Angela Baby, Carson, Tony Coriolis, Jess Palmer, Sketches, Sarah, Hippie Shake, Thunder Chicken, Mellow Manda. Good to see you. Hope all is well. Got Larry, got Trish, bunch of awesome people. Mark, PSYOP within a PSYOP, Angela, baby, Carson. Of course you did share. You always do. You guys are amazing. Peace and love. And of course, peace stands for positive energy, activates constant elevation, and the love is real. And when you keep it real, you keep the real ones. We're out of here. <laughs>